All right guys, so from this video, we are going to start coding our car racing game in Python. So let's get started with this video. Okay, so first of all, we need to import a couple of modules. And the first one that we import is basically the Pygame module. And then the next one is basically the system module. And you will come to know why we need the system module later on as we move on in this game. And then the third one we will import is basically the time module. And then the fourth one we will import is basically the random module. Okay, now we'll just import uh, another thing. And that's, that is basically, we'll import each and everything from pygame.locals. So let's type here pygame.locals. We're gonna import each and everything. Okay, so these are all the modules that we're gonna be, use, that we're gonna be using uh, in making the car racing game in Python. Okay, now first of all, uh, I will just initialize my pygame. So pygame.init. Next, we will just define the width and height of my screen. So for this, I'm gonna define two variables. So let's say that the width of my screen will be 800 pixels and the height, height of my screen will be, let's say, 600 pixels. Okay, and now let's say that my FPS rate will be 40. And this FPS basically means it is basically my frame rate. So I'll just add a comment here and I'll just say that it is my frame rate. And this basically means that my game loop function will be called 40 times in one second. Now we haven't created the, uh, the game loop uh, function yet, but we will create it. And that game loop function will be called 40 times in one second. Now you can just change it to 50 or 60, but I will just explain it uh, once we use it in our game loop. Okay, so now we have the FPS and now we'll just define the RGB value of couple of uh, colors. So my first color uh, will be let's say white and the RGB value for it will be and make sure that you just uh, put it in the form of a tuple. So the RGB value of uh, white is 255 and then 255 and then 255. And then I will just define the RGB value for that as well. So I'll just create a variable here and I'll just name it as L underscore red. And the RGB value for red will be the concentration on in, in that case is 255 for red and then zero for blue and green. Okay, now we'll just define another red color, but this time I'm gonna keep the concentration of red uh, 150 and then zero for uh, green and then zero for blue. Okay, now we'll just uh, define another RGB value for green color. And uh, in here, I will just this time put the value of red equal to zero. And then the concentration of green I will put is basically 255 and then for blue it will be zero. Now I'll just define another RGB value for green and this time it will be zero and then the concentration uh, of white this time will be 150 and then for uh, blue it will be zero. Now in here I'll just define another RGB value and this time it will be yellow and now the RGB value for yellow is basically 255 or the concentration of red is 255, 229 for green and then 10 for uh, blue. Okay, now we'll just define another uh, RGB value and that will be L underscore yellow. And uh, this time it will be uh, 212 and then 255 and then 10. And I will just define uh, two more RGB value and uh, this time it will be, let's say, my black color. So the RGB value for black is zero for red, zero for green, and then zero for uh, blue. Okay, so here we have black and now for the road color. So my road uh, color uh, value for RGB will be 47 for red and then 47 for uh, blue and then 47 for green as well. Okay, so now we have all of these RGB values. Well, we will use it uh, later on in this game and then you will and then you will just understand why do we have to define, why do we why do we have defined all of these colors? Okay, now we will just create our display. So uh, I will just name my display as display. You can just name it anything you want and put it equal to pygame.display.set underscore mod. And now make sure that you just pass the height and width here in the form of a tuple. So we already have defined these variables, that is the width and then height. Okay, so uh, let me just add a comment here and uh, let's say that it is basically display uh, surface object because this display is basically my surface object. Okay, so now I'll just set the caption uh, on my screen as well. So pygame.display.setCaption and I can set any caption 
but let's save this uh, add a caption and I will just say that it is the car racing and here let's add a command and I'll just say that it is basically my uh, caption okay so now we just create a clock so why do we need to create a clock uh, well obviously we need to time our game so for this we will just create a clock well I will just explain it once we use this clock later on um, in this game so clock now in order to create a clock we basically use by game dot time and then this class called clock okay so basically it is a class so we need to put this a bracket right here and I will just have a comment here and this basically my time object okay now we'll just load a couple of images that I already have basically attached uh, with this video but I have all of these images in my project location named Python tutorials so now we'll just load a couple of these images and um, the first image uh, that I will load is basically my car image so I will just name this variable as car image in which I will store that image so first of all I will just I need to load this image so I'll just say that uh, pygame image dot load and now in here I just need to specify the name of the uh, basically image that I have in my project location or any location on my computer so if that file is placed somewhere else on your computer then make sure that you specify the exact location inside the single or double quotation mark but since it is in my project location so I can just directly access it by just specifying its name so it is car.png okay so in here well I can just add a command and just say that loading my car image okay now I just throw, uh, load basically the road image so I will just name this image as road image and I will just put it equal to pygame dot image dot load and uh, basically I name that image as road one dot jpg okay uh, now I'll just load uh, the tree image as well so I'll just name this image as tree image one and put it equal to uh, pygame dot image dot load and basically I name that image as long tree one dot jpeg I'll just copy this line of code to just uh, basically paste another image so this time it will be tree image number two and I just name this image as it is long tree dot uh, long tree dot long tree two dot jpeg okay so now let me scroll it down to make sure that it is visible okay so and now we just load another image and this time I'll just name this image as Bugatti uh, and I will put it equal to pygame dot image dot load and I name this image as uh, bugatti.png okay so now let me just show you this image here we have this image okay so basically it is the name of my image and I just named it as bugatti.png which is basically one of the names that we used here for our cars uh, in our local language so I just named it as bugatti.png but you can just name it anything you want just uh, rename it uh, anything you want of your choice but I named it as bugatti.png Okay, so now we have loaded this image and uh, now we just load the game icon as well. So I'll just name this image as game icon and put it equal to pygame dot uh, image dot load and I'll just name this image as game icon dot png. Okay, so now we'll just uh, basically set the icon on our screen as well. So I'll just say that pygame dot uh, display dot set it is icon and in here we basically want to set this icon which is my game icon so let's copy this name and I'll just paste it right here okay so now I need to define some important uh, variables right here and the first one will be let's say my life variable so a life will be equal to two so uh, in my game there will be two lives so that is why I'm just putting the value of life equal to true or two okay so let me just add a comment and I'll just say that it is basically the life of the gamer okay so now we'll just define another variable uh, basically we'll just create an object uh, and that object will be my previous uh, so I'll just capitalize it so previous underscore score and I will put it equal to the uh, basically class that we haven't created it yet but we will create it uh, in the next video so dodge cars and basically in that class will just pass my display so I just name my uh, basically screen as display 
Okay, so just remember that we haven't created this class yet, but we will create it in the next video. So basically that class will be in a new file, basically a, a new Python file, and uh, we just we are just passing that display. So basically, when we, when we have another file, we need to import we need to import uh, that thing that we are using in that class uh, right here. So we'll just import we'll just create it uh, in the next video, and then we'll just create that class in the next video as well, and then we'll just import basically each and everything from that class uh, from that file as well. Okay, so um, here we have the previous code, and uh, then I will just say that uh, my previous code uh, dot previous code. Well, again, we haven't created this function yet, uh, but we will just create it in the next video. So remember that this function will be inside this class on uh, cars. Now we will just create this class again in the next video. Okay, so we have this thing and uh, next we will just uh, set the, uh, we just create another variable and I'll just name this variable as end game equal to false. So because uh, when I just start my game, my game will not be ended. So that is why I'm just setting the way of this variable equal to false. And then again, when my game is started, basically my game is not paused. So I'll just create another variable and I'll just put it equal to uh, false. Okay, so um, these are, so in here, in this video, we just first of all, um, basically defined uh, some variables, RGB, value of, RGB values for some colors. And then we just created a display and then set uh, some loaded some images and then we just uh, basically call that class that we haven't created yet but we will just create it in the next video so yeah that's it for this video in the next video uh we will just uh, continue with this course so thank you for watching and i will see you guys next time all right guys so in the previous video we called this class dodge cars but we haven't created that class yet now in this video we will just create that class so actually we will just create a separate python file and then we will just create that class basically this class in that file so let's just get started with this video okay so just create a new file so i already have created a file named as racing underscore car underscore dodge dot py now we will just create uh, this class uh in that file so uh, right in here first of all we'll just import a couple of things uh, in that class as well so let's type here import and the first one is obviously pi game and then the next one is basically the system module and then the third one is the OS module, and then the fourth one is the time module, and then the fifth one is basically the random module. And then we'll just import each and everything from pygame.locals as well. So pygame.locals. Um, so it is pygame.locals. We're gonna import each and everything. Okay, now we'll just create that class. So class and the name of that class, which is uh, Dodge Car. So make sure that the name right here is exactly the same as we specify right here okay so first of all we'll just create the initializer function of that class so or the constructor function so it is named as init and the first argument is obviously self and now uh, the first argument is basically self and then the next argument we will just apply is basically the display or our screen okay so and now in here we'll just first of all say that display uh, self dot display equal to my display next we'll just define the rgb value for some colors so the first one will be white and the rgb value for white is 255 and then 255 and then 255 and then the red as well so the rgb value for red is 255 0 and then 0 and then we can just do it for black as well so black is 0 0 and then 0 and then we're going to define the width and height of our screen in this file as well so it is basically self dot width equal to 800 pixels and then self dot height equal to 600 pixels and now we'll just load an image uh, and that image will be basically our game over image so i'll just name this image as game over image and i'll put it equal to pi game dot image dot load and it is basically my project location and i named it and i named this image as game over dot png okay now the next variable that we will define is basically our score variable so i'll just name this variable as b score and i'll put it equal to an empty list now okay so now the next function that we will define inside this class is basically my uh, and that function will be basically for showing any image that we want to put on our display screen so right in here i'll just name this function as um, plate underscore image 
And now the first argument it takes is basically obviously self and the next argument it takes is basically the image that we want to put. So in here I'll just name it as image and then the third and fourth argument basically the third and fourth argument basically the third second and uh, third argument uh, is basically the coordinates uh, where we want to put that image along x and y axis. So just name it as x and y. Okay now in here I'll just simply say that self dot display and then in order to put images uh, on the screen we use this function blade and now the first argument we need to pass is basically the image that we want to put and it's basically this image that we have passed and now the next argument it takes is basically a tuple and in that tuple we need to specify where we want to put on that image so it will be obviously along x-axis and then along y-axis so well we will just create a lot of functions uh, in that file but that is for the coming videos so yeah that's it for this video thank you for watching and i'll see you guys next time all right guys in this video we will start working on our entry screen or you can just call it as initial screen as well now that initial screen will be shown up as soon as we execute our program now on that screen we will have the name of our game and then we will have this image which we named as bugatti.png and then we will have three buttons that is the start button ready button and then the quit button okay so now let's just get started with this video uh, first of all we will just import each and everything from this file that we have created in the previous video so right here in this file racing underscore uh, car underscore main we'll just import each and everything uh, so from racing car underscore dodge we're gonna import each and everything okay so now let's uh, start working on our entry screen so for this we will just create a separate function uh, and uh, we'll just name this function as uh, let's say entry underscore screen so now inside this function first of all I will just create a variable and I'll set it equal to true because I want the screen to appear as soon as we execute our program so that is why I'm just putting this variable equal to true okay next we'll just set the background color of our screen so it's a display dot fill and let's say that the background color of our screen will be white now we already have defined the RGB value for white and then store it in this variable white okay now in here we will have a while loop so I'll say that while entry then just come inside this thing so basically this thing uh, will be true because we have set the, uh, this uh, variable entry equal to true okay so first of all inside this while loop we will continuously check if the user has pressed the cross button or not if the user has pressed the cross button then we'll just exit our pi game so right in here i'll just say that i will just look for any kind of event that happened so i'll say that event dot i will say that for event in pi game dot event dot get so basically we're just getting any kind of event that actually happens and if that event that actually happens so if the type of that event is basically the quit event which means the user has pressed the cross button on on the screen then what we want is that we want to uh, quit our game basically we want to quit our pi game and we also want to release all the system resources so for this i'll just say that system which is basically the module that we already have imported dot exit so this is basically the module that we already have imported in the uh, very first video the very very first coding videos and now in here with this function which is basically inside this module we are basically quitting or we are actually releasing all the system resources okay so if that is if that is the case then just simply quit our pi game and then release all the system resources or else if that is not the case then in here we're just going to define our uh, color tuple so i'll just name this a uh, variable as color tuple and we'll put it equal to a tuple and now inside that tuple we will have three colors red uh, yellow and green okay so basically these uh, colors will be chosen completely randomly so in here I'll just say that color equal to color tuple uh, right in here which is basically the name of this color and we basically want what we want is that we want this color to be chosen completely randomly so for this we'll just use this module random dot rent in it now basically uh, since uh, basically 
items in a tuple are stored are stored on, on the basis of index number so this first tuple this first item is at index number zero and then one and two so right in here let's say that zero till two and now it will just choose any random value from zero to either zero one or two and then in here we're just storing it in this variable color so basically in that color variable we are just choosing any random value from this tuple color tuple okay so now i will just call a function display message now we haven't created this function yet but we will create it in this video so display message and now the first argument it takes is basically uh what we want to put on the screen so let's say we will just first of all put um the name of our game which will be let's say dodge car game so dodge car and then the next thing is basically what is going to be the font size of this text so the font size will be let's say 70 pixels and then what are going to be the coordinates of that text that is where we want to put this text along x and y axis so it will be let's say uh, 400 pixels along x axis and then 100 pixels along y axis and then what is going to be the color of this thing and that is basically uh, this variable color that we have chosen completely randomly from this tuple okay so now again we'll just call this function display message because we want to put something else on our screen as well and that is basically who have actually made this game so let's say they're made by and then the name of that person who has actually made this game so in this case i have made this game so i'll just type here my name Dilan Khan. so you can just feel free to choose you can just feel free to write your name if you have made this game okay so we have this image and then what is going to be the font size of this text so it will be 20 pixels and now where we want to put this text on our screen so it is uh, will be like 650 along x-axis and then 20 along y-axis and then the color of uh, this text will be black okay now well first of all we need to define the instance so right in here i'll just uh, have this instance uh, and i'll just name this instance as just underscore in and put it equal to basically this class which is dodge car and uh, dodge cars and now in here obviously we need to pass our display so display and uh, now since we want to put this image on our screen as well so basically in here i'll just say that justin which is basically the instance that we have created for this class and now inside that class we have this function plate image which is uh, which i created for putting any image on the screen so in this case we just put this image on bugatti.png so right in here let's say call this function blit image and the first argument it is expecting is basically the image that we want to put so in uh, in this case we want to put an image named as uh, Bugatti. Now we already have loaded this image and we named this image as Bugatti and then the next two argument it is uh, expecting is basically where we want to put this image along x and y axis. So uh, let's say uh, this image Bugatti.png uh, will be uh, 175 pixels along x axis and then 200 pixels along y axis. Okay so basically uh, Till now what we are doing is that we are basically putting these two text on our screen using this function that we will create in this video and the next thing that we are doing is that we are putting this Bugatti image on the screen. Now the final thing that we need to do for our, init uh, for our initial screen is basically putting three buttons on that initial screen as well. So for this we will just create uh, another function that we will not create in this video but we will create it in the, in the other video. So uh, we will just name this function as interactive and the first argument, uh, the first two argument we need to pass is basically where we want to put um, my first button uh, along x and y axis. So it will be let's say 250 pixels along x axis and then 450 pixels along y axis and then the radius of that button will be 20 pixels and uh, because it will be uh, that button will be in circle so that is where we need to define this value of radius as well so next is basically the two colors that is green and then light underscore green okay so now why do i need to pass these two images for one button so basically in the coming videos what i will do is that so when my cursor is not on that button then it will be basically in a light green color while as soon as i move my cursor on that button then it will be in dark green color so that is why i'm just passing these two colors okay the next argument we need to pass is basically the text for that button and it will be basically my start uh, start button start text okay so now what i will do is i'll just copy this uh, function and we'll just call it two more times for my two other buttons that is the 
uh, ready button so ready and my quit button so quit okay so now in here we just need to change the coordinates for uh, x-axis yeah so it will be 400 pixels along x-axis and 550 pixels for my third button for my quit button and we do not need to change the value for y-axis and then radius but we need to change the value my ready button will be in yellow color and it will be in light yellow color when my mouse button is not on that button and now similarly it will be in red color and then it will be in light red color when my mouse button when my cursor is not on that button okay so we have uh, basically called these two functions but uh, in this video we will only create this function but in the next video we will just work only on this function because we have to do a lot of things in this function so right for now we'll just create this function um display message and we'll just create this function right here so dev and then in this function which is display message and first of all the first automatic it is expecting is basically this uh, text so text and the next argument it is expecting is basically the size of that text so we'll just name this as size and then the third and fourth argument it is expecting is basically the coordinates and then the final thing it is expecting is basically the color okay so these are the uh, one two three four five arguments okay so first of all we'll just create a text object so first of all let me just scroll it down okay so first of all we just create the text object so text obj and put it equal to so basically on that text object we'll just put our font so i'll say that pygame dot font dot font and uh, what is going to be font so it will be my font that i have in my project location and i have attached this font uh in the project in this uh next to this video as well so it is font.ttf and what is going to be the size of that font so it will be size that we have passed uh right here by calling this function so the font size will be 70 pixels for this text and then 20 pixels for this text okay so now i have um, this thing and uh, now we'll just create a surface so i'll just say that text surf text surf will be equal to my text object which is basically this thing my text object dot since we want to render our font as well so text and then since we want to render it we'll just pass true and then you see and then obviously my color okay and the next one is basically the rect the rect surface so rect surf and we'll put it equal to uh text surf dot get rect so basically we are getting a rectangle for this text simple as that okay so now we'll just put it according uh, to the coordinates so i'll just say that rect surf dot center and we want to center it according to the coordinates that is x and then y that we have passed right here okay so now we have center it and uh, now we want to display that text so i'll just say that display dot uh, palette and uh, first of all is basically obviously my text surface and the next one is basically my rec surface okay so now since we have put something on the screen now we need to update our screen as well and we'll just uh, um, basically update it using display dot update okay so now we cannot execute this function because we haven't have uh, we haven't created this function here but in the next video we'll just create this function and then we'll just execute this whole program as well so i hope uh, this video was pretty much clear so thank you for watching and i'll see you guys next time all right guys in this video we are going to create this function interactive that we have called in the previous video but we haven't created it yet so in this video we will just create this function so basically uh, we will just name it as interactive interactive and interactive so for this function see that we are passing a couple of arguments like for example uh, in here we are just passing first of all the coordinates which is 250 along x-axis and then 450 along y-axis for my start button and then we're just passing the value of radius which is 20. now why do i need to pass the value of radius right here well this is because all of these buttons that is the start button ready button and then the speed button 
are going to be in the form of a circle so when we're just talking about circle we then we need to talk about radius as well so basically when i'm saying that i'm just passing the coordinates of basically the start button so basically these are going to be the center position of my start circle button so in here let me just show you the screen so these are the three buttons that is the start button ready button and the quit button that we are going to create in this video so basically all of these um, buttons are in the form of a circle so in here basically this 250 and 450 for my start button is basically the center position of my circle which is right here now I need to find out the edge position of the circle. Now, why do I need to find the edge position of the circle? Well, this is because notice here that um, the color of the start button is basically dark green. But as soon as this, as soon as my cursor touch the edge of this uh, this button, then its color is changed to light green. And then same same goes for my ready button and then my quit button. So now how we go, how we gonna find the edge position of my circle well that is going to be through this radius so if i just subtract 250 with my radius 20 then this is going to be the edge position which is right here along x-axis so 250 minus 20 it is going to be the edge position of this circle which will be somewhere right here and then similarly when i just subtract 450 with this radius 20 then that is going to be the edge position of my circle along y-axis right here and then right here so basically i need to find the edge position so that as soon as my uh, as soon as my cursor touches the edges of the circle then its color should be changed and that is why we need to pass the this value of radius here as well okay so now just let's create uh, this function interactive so i'll just copy its name but before creating it we need to create some variables right here and the first one will basically the position of my mouse along x and y axis so I just create two variables mouse x and mouse y and initially we just set its value equal to zero and zero and then similarly we just need to uh, basically find out where the user has clicked along x and y axis basically we need to note down that coordinate as well so click x and then click y and initially we will just set its value equal to zero and zero as well okay now we'll just create another variable and we'll just name it as uh, mouse clicked and we'll just set its value equal to false because initially the mouse will not be clicked so that's why we're just setting its value equal to false okay so now just let's create this function interactive so let's copy its name and uh, let's just create it right here so dev and then name this function and now we need to basically provide all of these arguments so the first one is basically the center position of my first circle that is the start button circle so in here i'll just name this uh, i'll just name it as center x and the next one is basically uh center y and then the third one is basically my radius and basically these two colors uh, so the first one I will just named it as eye color and then the fifth one I will just named it as um, Let's type it a color and then finally basically the name of this button which is the start button So I'll just name it as message. Okay, so now in here I'll just um, make these variables global. So I'll just say that um, global um, mouse X and mouse Y and then similarly I'll just say the global click uh, X and then click Y and then similarly we'll just uh, make this mouse click variable global as well all right so now first of all again inside this function we will check uh, for some kind of events and all of these events are going to be related to my mouse because uh, moving my mouse is also an event and then clicking any button on the mouse is also an event so first of all we need to look for any kind of event so right in here I'll just say that for uh, event in pygame dot event dot get and it will basically get the event that will happen okay so now let me just scroll it down all right so for this thing and now I'll just say that if event dot type equal to equal to the mouse so it is mouse uh, it is mouse motion okay so this basically means that as soon as the user move move the mouse on the screen then basically capture that event and then we just store the coordinate when the user move the mouse 
in these two variables mouse x and then mouse y so i'll just say here in here i'll just say that mouse x and my mouse y will be equal to event dot position so we will just call this function in our game loop and this function will be called again and again and at every instance we are checking if the user if the user is moving its mouse or not and when the user is moving its mouse then we are just noting that coordinate mouse x and then mouse y in this variable mouse x and then mouse y so this uh, argument basically this attribute position will help us to get the position of mouse along x and then y axis okay now we'll just look for some other events as well so if the user is not moving its mouse this means that some other event has happened so we'll just check that what kind of event has actually happened so well it may be the mouse button down event so it means that the user has basically moved any button on the mouse okay so now when the user has clicked any um when the user has basically clicked then we're gonna just note that coordinate and then we'll just store it in this variable click x and then click y so this mouse button down basically means that when the user has clicked any button on the mouse okay so we're just storing that coordinate uh, at the point basically at that point where the user has clicked along x and y axis and we'll just put it equal to event dot pause is event dot pause okay so now since the mouse since the mouse is clicked right here if this condition is true so we'll just set this variable equal to true okay now we will just say that elif event dot type equal to equal to mouse button up which means that the user has now clicked the button and so this condition will be true and then again we will just note down the coordinates so, uh, so let's say that click x and then click y and that will be equal to event dot pause and again we will just set the value of mouse clicked equal to true okay so what i'm saying is that when the user has clicked the button then capture that event and then basically capture the position where the user has clicked the mouse and then set its value equal to true as well okay next when the user has moved basically when the user has clicked the button it means that the button of that mouse will now move up so again we still need to see where basically the user has clicked that button it means that when, when the user clicked the button then at the same point it will just move the cursor move the button as well then we're just capturing this position again um in these two variable click x and then click y now in here outside this for loop we will now find the center position of we will basically we will now find the edge position of all of these buttons so for this i will just create a variable and just say that left x basically i'm just finding out the edge position along x axis so let's say the left x equal to center x minus my radius okay so let me just open the screen so this is going to be this is basically the center x position of the mouse now just subtract the radius which is basically 20 so you know that on the x-axis as we move towards the left the value of x actually decreases so this is what i'm doing here as well i'm saying that when i just move towards the left and i just subtract the radius then basically this is going to be the edge position that is going to be the position and that is basically the edge position of the circle so that is left x and now similarly we'll just do it along y-axis as well so let me just scroll it down okay so i'll just say that left y equal to center y minus radius and that is going to be the edge position of my of my button along y axis simple as that and now the width will be equal to height basically my width and height so i just named it as with C and then height C will be equal to two times my radius. Okay, so basically, uh, since the radius is half the circle, so just multiply the radius with two, that is going to be the complete width of this button. Okay, so to multiply by width, and I will just add a comment right here that 
width and height of rect bounding circle okay so now i will just check if the user if we see the position of the cursor is on the edges or not so right in here i will just check if the if the position of the mouse is somewhere on that button or not so right in here first of all let me just write and then i will just explain so i'll say that mouse x is greater than left x well for more understanding purposes i've just named it as left underscore x and then left underscore y okay so let's say that if the position of it is greater than left x and mouse x is actually less than uh, my left x plus my width z and i need to check it now for y axis as well so mouse y is greater than left y and mouse y is actually less than left underscore y plus height underscore seam so if that is the case then we're gonna change the color of it so i just already have created the instance of that class and now inside that class we'll just create another function and uh, we'll just name that function as lights and the job of that function will be to change the color of that uh, basically that color as soon as we just move my cursor on that button okay so right in here i'll just say that uh, not lights and now for this uh, function we just need to pass the center position of x and then center position of y because we need to make sure that the color of the color at that point is only changed when the user actually moves the mouse according to this position according to this condition so center y and then the radius of the circle as well and then basically we just change it to basically this color which is that we have passed uh, right here in this function a color so initially it will be in this color while when the user moved its uh, cursor on that button then the color will be changed to this color all right so right in here okay so we haven't created this function yet but we will create it uh, in a minute but first of all let me just explain this condition uh, but i need to open this thing here as well so that you can just actually more better understand it okay so i'm saying that when the position of my mouse x so just notice that left x, left left x is basically exactly that position and then left y is exactly that position okay so when the position of my mouse along x axis is now greater than left x which means so left x is somewhere right here so when i'm saying that the mouse x is greater than left x means that my my mouse will be somewhere right here basically inside the circle and then i'm just checking if my mouse x is less than left x plus width which means that if it is basically less than the total width of the circle so the maximum width will end right here and if it is less than this width which means that it will be somewhere again right here inside it and then again same goes for left y as well so left y is basically the topmost position of the circle so if my mouse right here is actually greater than left y so left y is somewhere right here and if it is greater it means that it will be somewhere right here and again for this thing it is saying that if my mouse y is less than left y plus the total height which means that again oops right here it will be somewhere again inside that circle then if that is the case it means that the, my mouse will be inside this button so i need to change the color and this is what basically this function that we have called this with this instance will do okay so now well we will just create it in a minute but first of all right in here we'll just display the message as well so display message and then the message which is basically on the name of the button message and then 20 which is basically the size of that um message and uh, then i will say that center x and then center y plus 50 because the with height we want this message to be a little as well along y axis as well so that's which is adding plus 15 and then the color of this text will be black 
okay so first of all again let me just write another condition and then we will just create this function inside that class as well okay so in here I will just write a similar condition which will be equal to this condition um, and that is that will be checking if the user at this point has actually clicked the button or not basically when the user is basically somewhere right here and when the user has actually clicked at that point then in here we are actually noting down that coordinate as well so for this we need to write another if condition and that will be basically similar to this condition right here because in here we are basically inside that position so in the condition that we are going to write we will again say that the user if the mouse is again right here and if the user has clicked it then we're going to just note that co coordinate where the user has actually clicked so right in here i will just type here if click x is greater than 230 which is again basically this left x so 230 and click x is less than 230 which is basically left x again plus the width which is 40 and click y is greater than 430 and click y is less than 430 plus 40 which is going to be which is basically the width and another condition we need to write is basically if the mouse is clicked or not so mouse clicked equal to equal to true then it will just come inside this condition and we'll just say that mouse clicked equal to now false because once the mouse is clicked then we're gonna again set its value equal to false and then we will again put it equal to true when the mouse button is clicked once again okay now we will just make the value of this variable life as global as well and then we'll just make another global variable and this time it will be game paused okay so in here i'll just say that if life equal to equal to negative one which means that there is no life left so when the user has clicked the start button it means that the life will be equal to two but in here i'm just saying, checking that if the life if there is no life then we're gonna set the value of life equal to two, two once again and then we're gonna just enter inside our game so basically for this we will just create another function uh, and we will just name this function as enter game well again we haven't created this function yet but we will create it in the coming videos so enter game and uh, then it will just come inside after the enter game it will just come inside the main loop uh, basically the main function again we haven't created this function but we will create it later on elif i will say that elif game paused if the game paused was actually true then we're gonna set the game paused equal to false because the user actually want to play the game so we basically will just set its value equal to false and we basically we will just uh, load a music sound so mixer dot music dot uh, unpause okay else we'll say that again enter um, game again we haven't created this uh, function yet but we will create it later on in this video main all right so basically this condition basically this whole thing that we have written only for our start button and now we'll just write it for our quit button so in here I'm, i just said that at any point when the user click on that button then we want to actually play the game so enter basically inside enter in, basically enter inside this function enter game where we, where we will control our game and then again enter inside our main function okay so now we will just do it for this quit button well we will not do it for this ready button this is just for um, decorating the screen but we will only do it only for this quit button and when the user cl actually clicked on that button then me means that the user actually want to quit our game means that the screen will be quitted and our game will be exited so again let me just minimize it okay so basically when the user has clicked the quit button so in here basically this whole condition was for my start button but if the user has not clicked at this position on the start button then in here i will just check that if the user has clicked on the else button or not so let's say that l if 
uh, click X. Basically, the reason is it's exactly the same, so I do not need to explain it. So I just type here 4, 5, 30 and click X. Basically, the user has clicked at 5.30 and plus 40, which is the width. And then just need to check for Y as well. So click Y is greater than, let me just scroll it down because you can't see it. Click Y greater than 4.30 and click Y is less than 4.30 plus 40. And we need to make sure that the user has clicked at that point means that when the user has clicked then we have set it its value equal to true so it should be true when the user has clicked that button so if that is the case then means that the user has actually clicked the quit button because all of these coordinates are for my quit button okay so if that is the case then we want to quit our game so let's say quit and then we want to reach all the system resources as well so system dot exit okay so now we have uh, basically written the la for uh, this if statement basically this if statement but now we will just write the la for this uh, this this if as well okay so uh, that is basically the case when actually the user has actually pointed uh, its cursor on the start button then we then then we want the color to be basically um, then we actually want this color but if that is not the case then it will just enter inside the else block so right in here i think it is right here just uh, let me just check it once again to make sure that okay so we just absolutely right so i just have else if that is not the case then we just call this function lights again we haven't created it yet but we will create it in a minute so again, we'll just pass the center position of my circle, so center Y and then the radius, and then basically this color. So this color, okay. And then we will just call this function display message as well. And then obviously we want what message to appear on it. And it, uh, basically size of this message will be 20. And then in here, we'll just pass center X and then center Y, which is basically the uh, coordinates of my the center coordinate of my circle so it, again it should be 50 which is the width and uh, then the color of it will be black all right so yeah that's all we need to do and uh, now finally we actually need to create this function lights so we will just create it right here okay so in here we just create this function so def and then the name of this function and the first argument is obviously self and then the next argument that we have supplied is basically the coordinate, the center coordinates of my circle and then the radius. So radius and then finally the color. All right, so now basically since we are drawing the color, uh, drawing the circle, so let's say then pygame.draw and now in order to draw the circle, we just use this function circle and basically it will be self dot on the display screen and then we already have passed the color so it will be color and then we will want to put it we need to pass basically the center coordinates so let me just close it and let me just scroll it down so it will be center x and then center y and then finally we need just need to provide the value of radius as well because when we are just talking about circle then we need to talk about radius as well okay so yeah that's all we need to do for this video and now we can just execute this whole code so we can just simply execute it uh, with this line just make sure that uh, well we haven't created this, this function but these functions are not used um, in this video so it will not throw any error as long as I haven't clicked um, these buttons basically these buttons so we will just not click it but we will just see the other functionalities if it is working or not so now let me just execute this whole code and hopefully we will not have any error okay so we are getting an error so let's see what this error is it has no attributes previous score all right so basically here we are getting this error because we haven't created this function yet so let me just comment this line out and uh, now let me just execute this whole code once again and now let's see if we are just seeing the screen or not all right so here we have the screen and uh, we're just seeing nothing on the screen and uh, let's see what is the reason 
and uh, this is obviously because we haven't called the update function so I think it will be yeah right here since uh, we're just creating these buttons um, using this function so first of all I'll just type here by game dot um, display dot update and uh, then we will just take our clock so clock dot uh, take it is clock dot take with let's say 30 uh, frames per second okay so now hopefully we will not be getting any further error okay so still we are not seeing anything so let's okay so we need to look for that error and uh, let me just see where is that error okay so first of all we have done all these things and uh, then we have this uh, function so i think that the problem is actually right here in this function so let's see what is wrong okay so yeah i think i found it very quickly so this one should be a list bracket and not uh, a round bracket okay so now if you just execute this whole code this time you should be able to see everything looking fine and yeah you can see that everything is looking absolutely fine so first of all i have uh, this text and then you can see that this text is actually bidding and this is because we have created a tuple and in that tuple we have three colors and basically we are randomly choosing a color for this text uh, so that is why and again we are just actually calling it in a while loop so that is why just again and again changing its color and it just seems like it is uh, bleeding okay so and then we have this bugatti image and then we have these three buttons the start button ready button and the quit button okay so now as soon as i just move my mouse right here you can see that its color is dark green but as soon as i just touch the edge you can see that its color is now changed to a uh, light green and then similarly it's uh, basically it will uh, yeah, in here you can see that it's now changed to light yellow and then in here you can see that it's now changed to light red uh, as well okay so i have basically attached uh, the, the code of um whatever we have written so far uh, next to this video so if you're just getting any error of any kind then just copy that code and then paste it um in your pycharm and hopefully that code will run absolutely fine for you so thank you for watching and i'll see you guys next time Alright guys, in this video we will write down all the functions that we need to write for this file which is named as racing underscore car underscore dodge dot py and then we will just control all of these functions from our main file which is named as racing underscore car underscore main dot py Okay, now the first uh, function that we will write in this file is uh, basically for our opponent cars so I will just name this function as opponent underscore cars and the only argument it takes is basically self and now we just create a list and now inside that list we'll just load all the opponent car images so i will just name this image as uh, basically this list as opponent underscore cars and now we'll put it equal to a list and now inside that list i will just load all the opponent car images so it, be, it will be a uh, by game image dot load and uh, our first opponent car will be car op one dot png and then similarly we just put a comma because it's a list and now for my second item i'll just load another uh, another image another uh, opponent car image so this time it will be uh, named as blue uh, blue car dot png and now for the third item i'll just load another image so it is by game image dot load and this time it will be uh, car op 3 dot png okay so now inside that list we have we have loaded all the opponent car images and now we'll just define the height and width of of each of these opponent car images so for this i will just create another list in which we will just list down the height and width of each of these opponent cars so uh, i will just name this list as uh, self dot uh, opponent underscore cars underscore height and then width and i'll put it equal to again a list and now first of all i will just define the uh, width and height of my first opponent car which will be 65 pixels in width and 104 pixels in height and now for my second opponent car it will be 64 pixels in width and 106 pixels in height and now my fire for my final opponent car it will be 63 pixels in width and 104 pixels in height okay and now we want our cars opponent cars 
to be uh, let's say we want our opponent cards to be basically it should appear on the on our game totally randomly so i will just define a random uh, a random number so i will just create uh, first of all a variable and uh, basically since i will just use this module random and use this function random range and the range will be from 0 to 3 because it does not include the last specified column so it will be basically 0 1 and then 2 okay so now we have uh, the random number now we just uh, we will just apply it on our random cards so right here i will just say that uh, self dot current underscore car will be equal to self dot basically this list which is opponent underscore cars so op cars and since i want to load it totally randomly so i will just specify the index number which is which will be loaded totally randomly so self dot random number okay so basically since we have uh, this this thing in a list so i'm basically specifying the uh, name of that list and then for the index number of that list it will be loaded totally randomly and since the range is between 0 to uh, 3 basically it does, it does not include the last specified columns so it is 0 1 and 2 so these images will be loaded totally randomly and then will be stored it in this variable current car and then that opponent current car will be uh, basically displayed on our game okay so now we have the current car and uh, now we just want the height and width to be applied uh, on that current car totally randomly as well so in here i will just say that self dot on uh, the width of that current car so self dot current width and then self dot uh, current underscore height and i will put it equal to self dot opponent car height and width and now again since i want to be loaded it complete uh, totally randomly as well so i'll just type here self dot random number just like i have specified right here okay now we'll just return on uh, that current car and that current uh, width and height that is loaded totally randomly so i'll just say that i want this function to return first of all the current car which is basically uh, this thing which will be loaded from this list basically this list totally randomly and then i want to return uh, this current width and height which will be loaded from this list totally randomly so self dot current uh, first of all it will be so yeah first, first of all it will be current car and then then it will be self dot current uh, width so current width where is it okay it is not here so it will be current uh, underscore width okay so i think oops it is self dot current width and yeah now it is working fine and the next then next it will be self dot current height okay so now we have returned everything and uh, now we just need to uh, define where we want this opponent cards to appear on our game so for this we'll just create another function so right in here we'll just define this function and all of these functions are basically inside that class that we named as dodge cars okay uh, so now in here i will just uh, just create another function and i will just name this function as um opponent underscore car underscore coordinates and uh, the only argument we, we will just supply is basically the right end of my road so well we haven't defined this variable yet but uh, we will just pass it to this function and that basically in that variable we have uh, stored the uh, value of the total right end of the road you will just understand it once we will just create this variable and then we'll just pass it uh, to this function okay so I'll just now create a variable and uh, now i need to define where my opponent car should appear along x-axis so i'll just say create this variable opponent car and then underscore start x so i just named this variable uh, like this but you can just name it anything you want and put it equal to random dot rand inch obviously i'm using this function because uh, i want to appear it along x-axis totally ran randomly so it will be uh, 200 pixels uh, to the uh, road right end minus 64 and uh, the reason i'm just doing it because uh, basically this is a range and basically in that range it should appear totally randomly along x-axis 
And the reason I'm just subtracting minus 64 because I do not want uh, my opponent card to appear completely on the right side of the road, but it should be a little on the left side of the right side. So I hope it is making sense. Okay, so now we have the X coordinate and uh, now uh, for, well, let me just first of all, just create this list and uh, then you would just understand it once we just do it for our Y coordinate. So um, uh, basically it will be uh, opponent card underscore start Y list. And I will put it equal to, uh, first of all, we will have some uh, values right here, negative 10 and then negative 20. And then let's say negative 15 and then negative 12 and then negative 23. Okay, uh, well, I'm doing it because along Y axis, I want my opponent card to appear in these coordinates. So uh, let me just write, write it down and then you just understand. So self dot opponent card underscore start, this time it will be start Y. And I'll put it equal to self dot opponent card. Uh, if you can just, yeah, this list and now from this list we want to choose the y coordinate basically from this list again totally randomly so right in here let's specify random and then random dot rand range and it will be obviously from 0 to 4 it does not include last specified um values so it will be 0 1 2 and 3. okay so along x axis i want to appear my car basically in between this range uh, which is uh, 200 and then the right end of the road minus 64 and then along uh, y axis i want my opponent card to appear totally randomly on these coordinates simple as that and uh, now we will just return uh, this coordinate so return um self dot opponent car start x and then self dot opponent car start y Okay, so uh, in this function, we just define the height and width of our opponent cards, and, and then in this function, we define the uh, coordinates of our opponent card, where it should appear on our screen. Okay, so now we have these two functions. Now another function that we will create is basically for our uh, score. So score and the only argument it takes is basically count, and the basically count is basically for counting the score that we have made in our game. So right in here, uh, it is score, and uh, now we'll just create a score object. So score obj, and we'll put it equal to pygame.font because it will have a font, um, and then the font will be font.ttf. Uh, so again, I have attached this font um, with the, in the section, so you can just download that font and then place it in your project location. And then I'll just define a surface for it. So score um, surf, and we put it equal to self dot basically our object which is uh, the score object dot because we want to render our score so the first argument we'll just uh, so in here we'll just add a string so score and it should appear something like this plus str uh, or score and then then since we want to appear it on our screen then we'll just specify here true and then the color of our score will be uh black okay so now we want to display it on the screen so self dot display dot plate and the first argument takes is basically what we want to appear so it is basically self dot score uh surface and then we want to appear should be should be zero and then zero uh zero along x-axis and then zero along y-axis okay so now we have the score and uh, now we will just define another function and that will be basically for our game mode function and obviously our game will be over when our car basically collide or crashes with the opponent car so while well, we haven't uh, created the logic for this uh well we will create this logic in this file racing underscore main.py but in here we'll just display uh, the game over image so i'll just name this function as game over so game over and in here we'll just pass the width and height of our game over so width and height and uh, now in here we will just display this image display dot blit and since we already have loaded this image in the initializer function of uh, this class which is right here and, and it's named as go uh, go image 
so in here we'll just display this image and it is a self dot go image and then we will want to paste that image it will be 100 along x-axis and then 200 pixels along y-axis and now since we are uh, putting it on the screen we need to update our screen as well so by game dot display uh, dot update and once it is appeared then we will just leave for let's say two seconds okay so now we have our game or function uh, as well now another function that will uh, create is basically for our current okay so for our current score so basically we will just uh, store all the scores that we have made previously and currently in a file so first of all let me just show you this file so it is named as i think i just named it yeah so here it is which is highest score.txt so i'm just placing all the scores that i have made uh, previously in a file so i have played this game like 696 number of times and uh, in the previous in the previous game i have scored a six score and then 30 score and then 13 so these are all the scores that i have made previously while playing my car racing game now we will just uh in here first of all i want uh, whatever score i made i want that score to be placed in this file which is named as his which uh, stands for highest score dot txt okay so we'll just create a function for that and i'll just name this function as enter underscore current underscore score and the first argument it takes is basically self obviously and the next argument it will take is basically the uh, over current score basically so current score and since we want to write over current score so first of all we will just open this file in python we need to uh, whenever we are using any file we first of all need to open it so since we will uh, write to this file so we'll just uh, name this variable as write and we'll just open this so open open is basically a built-in function in python which is used to open a file so now you just need to specify the name of that file where it is placed uh, on in your where it is placed on your computer but since it is placed in my project location so i can just specify it um, directly with its name and uh, yeah now i need to basically append something uh, and by appending i means that i want to append basically i want to write something to this file at the end so let's say that uh, in the next game in game number 697 i scored let's say 10 so when i just use append it will just append my last score on game number 697 basically on index number 690 uh it is basically it starts from one so it will be basically 698 okay uh not on this file right here so i'll just use here aim and uh, now we will just write to it so we'll just type here write uh, dot write i'll just use this function write and uh, now since i want to write it but i want to write it on the next line so if i just let's say score 90 then i do not want to appear it next to this number but i want to appear it on the next line so right in here i'll just use here a uh, slash n okay so i have this thing and uh, now i'll just uh, First of all, I'll just type here write dot write, and uh, now we'll just convert our current score to a string, and then we'll just write it uh, to this file, uh, which is basically stored in this variable write. So that is what we're just calling this function write um, with this thing uh, write. Yeah, so it will basically store store, uh, store our current score uh, in this file. Okay, so now we have this thing, and now since we have written our current score uh, in that file, now we just close this file. So write dot uh, close. Okay, so yeah, that's all we need to do for uh, this function. And now what I want is that I will I will be displaying the current score on, on our screen, and then I will be displaying my previous score on the game on our screen as well. So for this, I will just uh, create another function and uh, i will just name this function as dev um, previous underscore score and the only argument we will just apply is basically the class argument which is self okay so this time since we have scored it previously this time we only need to read it we do not need to write it because we already have scored it we just need to read it so i'll just create a variable this time i'll just name this as read and again i'll just open my file so open and it is named as high score.txt and uh, again i will just uh, type here a and uh, now i'll just type here right dot uh, right because uh, i just want to move it to the next line as well 
oops uh, i think we are just doing it and it has something wrong it should be this time r which stands for read because we are reading something from the file we are not writing something to the file so right in here um yeah so let me just get rid of this thing and uh, now I'll just type here self dot score and uh in here i'll just use this uh basically variable read and now since we, we will be reading all the lines so i'll just use a i will just use this function read lines which will just read all the lines uh in this file uh basically in this file okay uh now we will just close it so read dot close it so once it will just read all the lines then we'll just close it and then uh let me just first write it down and then i will just explain so self dot score and i will put it equal to basically a list and in that list we'll do what what is basically a basic concept of python which is list comprehension so x dot r strip i'm just using this string uh, string function which is named as r dot strip and i'll just say that for x in self dot score okay so what i'm doing is that i'm just going through all the scores that i have basically in this variable score and basically in that variable we have all the lines that we have in this file so i'm just reading it and then storing it in this list and now what this string function do is that it basically removes all the white spaces on the right side so since we do not have any white spaces on the left side you can see it is completely empty but we have some uh, spaces on the right side so the strip function will remove all the white spaces on the right side so that's why so that is why i'm just using this function r strip and this is basically uh, a variable that we will use to go through all the lines uh, basically through uh, which is basically in this variable score okay so now we have it and uh, now we'll just type here self dot i'll just write this variable self dot score um self dot score and i will put it equal to uh, a list and just type here int x and we'll just say that for x in self dot score and then we'll just sort it down so self dot because we have converted it here into a, uh, an integer and then we have just again gone gone through all of these uh, all of our scores and now we can just sort it so self dot uh, score dot sort we we'll now sort it and uh, now so now we have sorted it now we'll just display our previous score so right in here i will just uh, say that our dodge cars dot show underscore previous underscore score and uh, now in here the first argument will just apply self and the next argument will supply is that self dot score and in here i'll just say that length so basically it should be a list bracket so length and then i'll just type here self dot score minus one okay so what i have done here is that what i want is that i want to display my previous score so for this what i've done is that first of all i've just gone through all of these uh, scores that i have inside this file and then i've just sorted it and then what i'm doing is that i'm just getting the length of my score so in this case the length is the number of uh, scores that we have made is 696 but since indexes start from uh, zero, so basically this length function will return the number of uh, scores that we have, the number of lines that we have in this file, which is 696. But since we want to display our previous score, which will be basically at index number, basically this score, which is, uh, in our case, it is six. So since indexes start from zero, so that is why we have to add here negative one because indexes always start from zero, but in here it is starting from zero so that is why we have to use negative one which will actually specify to this index so i hope that you understood it it's very a basic concept of um python and uh, now again you have noticed that we have actually used this function but we haven't created this function yet and now let's just create this function right here so dev and then the name of this function which is show previous code and uh, the only argument it will take is basically uh, our score and uh, now let me just first of all scroll it down to make sure it is visible okay now in here i just say that self dot d score 
So I'm just creating a variable here and just name it as on dev score obj and I will put it equal to first of all a font because we want to in here what I'm doing is that I'm just getting the previous score and now inside that function uh, we will just display our previous score so for this first of all uh, I will just uh, load my font which is font and uh, I name this font as font.ttf and uh, the font size will be 20 pixels and now we'll just create a surface for um, our text so self dot uh, d score and this time we'll just name it as surf which basically means surface so self dot score object dot render and uh, now in here uh, I'm just first of all use a text and I'll just say that turns left uh, and we'll just add a string so str and the string will be the number of lives and it will be obviously true because we want to appear it on the screen and then the not lives or one we need to spe specify is basically um, flat okay so right in here okay so in here it should not be this thing it should be uh, p score oops I'm just what I'm doing I don't know so it turns left it should not be turns left but it will be previous high score and uh, then in here um, what I'm gonna do is that I'll just display it on the on our screen so self dot display dot blade and in here I'll just specify self dot on uh, D score my surface in which I have it and then the coordinates so it will be zero along x axis and then uh, 575 along y axis and now we'll just create one final function for this video and that will be for displaying over a number of lives that are left so self dot life and the first argument is a self and then the next argument is life and uh, then I'll just type here self dot um, since we want to display it so first of all we'll just create an object for this so self object and I'll just first of all again load a font so self dot font uh, so it is font dot and then this class font and then the name of this font which is font dot ttf and then the font size uh, will be 30 pixels and finally we'll just create a surface for it as well so this time it will be score score surface and I will put it equal to self dot uh, my score object dot render and uh, in here we'll just say that turns that the number of lives that are left so turns left this thing and it will be string life and finally why I'm getting an error here so it should be plus because we're adding a string and uh, next argument will just apply is basically true and then the final argument will just apply is basically the color of that font or the color of the text which will be black then finally we will just display uh, it on our screen so self dot display dot plate and finally we will just display it basically the surface and we want to appear it on the screen so it should be 620 pixels along x axis and 0 pixels along y axis okay so these are all the functions that we need to work we already have created this function light okay so uh, that's all uh, basically for this file racing underscore car, car dot dodge dot py now we just control all of these functions from our main file which is named as racing underscore car underscore main dot py okay so i need to check if i miss i uh, made any mistake right here so i think there is nothing no mistake game over and then enter current score previous score everything is looking fine on uh, d score and then this thing uh, yeah I think everything is looking fine if there is any mistake um I will just let you know I will let you know in the next video and if you just pointed out that mistake then you can just correct it right now but if, you, if I just found it later on I will just correct it I'll just let you know in the next video so yeah that's it for this video thank you for watching and I'll see you guys next time all right guys in this video we will create a couple of functions for this file named as racing underscore car underscore main dot py so in the previous video we have created all the functions that we need to create for this file named as racing underscore car underscore dodge dot py now we will create some functions in this video for this file as well so let's get started with this video okay now the first function that i'm going to create is basically 
I will just name it as crash and uh, basically this function will be called when the opponent car basically crashes with our car. So uh, for the argument I need to specify the coordinates of, of the opponent car. So right in here I will say that uh, opponent car underscore start x and then opponent car underscore uh, start y and uh, then I need to pass the score as well. So I will just named it as count. Okay, so now in here, I will first of all create a variable for my current score. So I'll just name this variable as uh, enter current uh, underscore score. And I will put it equal to uh, basically this class, which is named as dodge card that we have created in this file. Okay, now in here, we need to pass our display as well. Okay, now I'm gonna create, so basically when the two car will crash, will produce a sound and that will be basically on the crash sound so right in here I will just say that I'll just create an object and I'm just named it as uh, sound uh, obj and I will put it equal to pygame uh, dot mixer so mixer dot sound and now in here we need to pass basically the name of the sound so I have it in my project location which is named as short dot wave so basically this is the extension of my audio file okay now we want to play it as well so let's tap here sound object dot play and we do not need to pass any argument and now when basically two car uh, crashes we just call a function that we haven't created yet but we will create it after we are done with this function so we'll just name this function as explosion and for the argument we will just pass both of these argument so we'll just copy uh, its name and i will just paste it right in here and uh, now in here i will just pass the current score i will basically call a function so that will be enter current score which is basically this object for this class and now inside this class we have created a function known as uh, enter current score and uh, now for the argument we only need to pass count which is basically our score and uh, now we can uh, First of all, when two car crashes, then our life, that is the number of lives, will be reduced. So for this, we'll just create another function and we'll just name this function as life count. Now again, we haven't created this, this function or this function. Now we will create it uh, in a minute once we are done, first of all, with this function and then with this function. So uh, for life count and then I will just sleep for some time. So time dot sleep because when two car will crashes, then it will just sleep for some time so that uh, we can see the entire explosion. So let's say that we will only sleep for two seconds. And after sleeping for two seconds, we're gonna call our main function. Now again, we haven't created this function yet, uh, but we will create it uh, in the next couple of videos. But first of all, now let's create uh, this function, which is named as explosion. Uh, basically we have called it right here is explosion. So now we'll just create this function uh, outside this function so def and then the name of this function and let me just scroll it down to make sure that it's visible okay so here it is okay now for the argument since we are in here we're just passing uh basically these two arguments now it will be received uh right in here so we'll just name it the same so i'll just copy its name copy and i'll just paste it right in here and now we'll just enter inside the body of uh, explosion now in here we are just producing the sound and now in here we'll just uh, basically uh, display the explosion image as well so there will be an image when our two car uh, collides and that will be basically an explosion uh, image so in here we we'll just first of all load it so i just named it as explosion img and i'll put it equal to pygame dot image dot load and now we're going to load this image and i named this image as explosion dot jf so let me just show you this image it is inside my project location and here it is Okay, so this is going to be the image that will be shown once two car, basically once the opponent car and then our car will collide. So this is going to be the image uh, that will be that we will see on our screen uh, when to, when over and then and then the opponent car collide. Okay, so this is going to be the image and now we're going to display it on the screen. So I'll just uh, say that display dot uh, blit. And now for the argument, we need to first of all pass that explosion image, which is uh, expimg and then basically where we want this image to be displayed. So 
the place where uh, where overcurrent and open end car collides, we want that explosion to be displayed at that exact location. So basically, the explosion will occur uh, basically at the coordinates of the open end car. So basically, we will just pass both of these uh, variables, which, which which are basically the coordinates of our open end car. And now, since we are displaying an image, we need to update our screen as well. So pygame dot it is display and then update. All right, so now we have the explosion uh, function as well. And now in here, we are basically calling our live count function as well. Now, what is going to be the purpose of this function live count? Well, when two car collides, then the number of lives, so we will have, let's say three lives. And when let's say that we are playing the game for the first time and then uh, our car collide with the opponent car, then the number of lives will be reduced to two. And then when it again collides, then the number of lives will be reduced to, uh, reduced to one and then zero, and then our game will be over. So this is what this function will do. It will basically reduce the number of uh, lives as we are colliding with the opponent car. So let's say that I will just create this function right in here. So, well, I think this function, yeah, let, let it just be right here. Okay, so in here, I just type def and then this function life. Make sure that it is exactly the same. And I will just enter inside the body of this function. Okay, now I'm gonna make uh, this variable global. So we have created uh, a variable, if you remember, and then we named it as life. And I think we set its value equal to three, I think, or maybe two. So we are just making it global. Yeah, it is, I think we have set it equal to two. You can see that we have created this function inside this file and then we have set its value equal to two. Now we're just making this variable global and now in here, this, uh, this will basically reduce uh, the number of lives. Uh, so minus equal to one and now in here, we'll just check for something. So when the number of lives uh, will be negative one, so first of all, it will be two and then one and then zero and then it will be negative one. So when it is negative one means that our game will be over. So right in here, I'll just check that if life equal to equal to negative one in here, we'll just enter inside the if block and I'll just say that game over, make sure that it's p is small, game over equal to this um, class uh, dodge cars that we have inside this function. And obviously we need to pass the display and then we'll just display basically game over dot call this function that we have inside this class. Um, I, I can just show you, yeah, here it is. And the only argument it is expecting is that where we want our game, game over image uh, to be displayed. Well, it is not, it is I think the width and height of our game over image. So right in here, I uh, will just pass the height and width and we already have defined it, so it is width and then height. Okay, so now uh, right in here, I'll just tap here while true, if this condition is true, means that if this condition is true, then in here, as long as it is true, uh, I think uh, this is, yeah, in small. So let me just scroll it down, basically let me just make it to the next line so that it can make more sense. Okay, so, if, if, so basically when this is true, then we will have an option to restart our game as well. So for this, we're gonna be creating another function where I'm just uh, basically calling this function now, but we will just create it uh, later on. So, well, let's just create it right now. So basically this restart page function, what it will do is that when our game is over, then the user will have the option to restart the game and this is what this function will do so restart page and now we just create this function right in here but first of all uh, let me just scroll it down so yeah dev and then the name of this function uh, restart page and now in here since uh, we will have let's say two buttons uh, the one will be the restart button and then the other one will be the quit button when the user will click the restart button, it will basically restart our game. And when the user will uh, basically click, click the quit button, then our game will be quit. So again, we're just calling this function interactive that we have created previously. Uh, basically, if you remember, the job of that interactive function was previously to create, um, first of all, the, uh, the title of our image and then our uh, basically car image and then those three buttons, that is the start, bu start button and then the quit button 
and then the ready button but now we'll just create two or uh, two buttons and the first uh, one will be at 250 and then uh, 450 uh, basically these are the coordinates and then the radius of it will be 20 so I think you remember why we need to pass this radius right here because uh, we are creating a circle button so um, in here we are just we will just pass um, two or uh, two colors and that would be green and then the other one will be light green and then the text for this button will be a uh, restart okay so now we have it and now let's we'll copy this thing because now we need to create it for our quit button as well because the user may click the quit button as well but this time we need to change the coordinates uh, it this time it will be 550 pixels along x-axis and then 450 pixels along y-axis and this time the color will be for quit button it will be red and then light underscore red okay now since we are displaying it um on the screen we need to update our screen as well so pygame.display.update and uh let's say that uh this thing basically this function will be called um 15 times uh, in one second so for this we'll use our clock that we already have created and take and let's say that it will be called 50 times in one second so this basically means that this restart a uh, page that we are calling uh, basically from this function a uh, life count will be called 15 times in one second so i hope it is making sense okay now the other function that we will create uh, will be the pause button so right in here we'll just create it so dev and then the name this function uh, we will just name it as pause and now we'll just enter inside the body and uh, again we have created uh, a variable named as uh, game paused so we have initially set its value equal to false yeah you can see that previously inside this file we have created this variable and the type of it is bo uh, boolean variable and then initially we have set its value equal to false because uh, our game will not be paused uh, once we start the game so that is why initially it was uh, false but now we are just making this variable global so that it can be visible throughout our program okay so now in here um i will just uh, first of all i will just I will just type here pygame dot mixer dot um music dot pause okay so now we'll just set its value equal to it is game paused equal to true and now in here i'll just check that while game paused then in here we'll just display a message so we have created this function display message and uh, the first argument we need to pass is basically the text uh, and it will be let's say paused and uh, the next thing if i can show you this function that will be much more better okay uh, so first of all we need to pass the text and then the size of the text and then the coordinates we we'll want to display that text and then the color of this text so the second argument we need to pass is basically the size and uh, let's say that the size uh, will be 100 pixels and then we need to pass um width uh, divided by two and then the height will be let's say height divided by two and then the color will be let's say black okay now when the game will be paused uh, basically there will be again two buttons uh the first one will be the continue button and when the user press the continue button it means that the game will be uh, will start uh, at the point where we have paused it and then there will be another button that will be the quit button and when the user press the quit button it means the user want to quit the game so for this again we will just uh, call this function interactive and we need to pass the uh, center value for uh, our circle because we are going to again create um, buttons in the form of circles so uh, 250 along x-axis 450 along y-axis and then 20 will be the radius and then obviously there will be two colors uh, light green and then light green and then the text of it will be uh, continue so continue and then this explain explanation marks and then again we'll just call this function interactive and this time it will be 550 and then 450 and then the radius will be 20 and red and then a uh, light red and then the text for this button will be quit okay so now again uh since we are displaying it we need to update our screen so display dot update 
and then we need to uh, basically let's say that we'll just call this function uh, basically this um, this thing this uh, this while loop will be called let's say um, let's say 30 times in one second so clock dot take okay so why do I need to basically call this function 30 times in one second well this is because when the game will be paused our game will be continuously looking for any event to happen so continuously to be looking for if the user has pressed either the uh, continue button or the quit button so i already have told what is the function of continue and quit but our game actually has to look again and again for if the user has pressed either the continue button or the quit button so it will be waiting for any event and basically it will be checking if the user has pressed the continue or quit button 30 times in one one second means that this game loop basically this loop will be called 30 times in one second so i hope it is making sense okay so i think uh yeah that's it for this video uh in the next video we will just create uh i don't know why it is getting this error so it is interactive yeah and uh, then we need to just make sure that it is correct here as well so it is interactive yep okay so yeah the error is now gone and so i hope that i have previously yeah in here we have called it so entry screen and uh, where we had previously called this function if i can just see it yeah so right in here oops what is wrong yeah it's now working absolutely fine and yeah that's it for this video uh if i have any mistake uh, i will let you know in the uh, in the next video but thank you for watching in the next video we will just work on another function thank you for watching and i'll see you guys next time all right guys in this video we will only work on one function and we'll just name this function as def enter underscore uh, game that we have called right here now what is going to be the purpose of this function well initially when we run our program then there will be three buttons that is the start button ready button and then the quit button so forget about the ready button for now because it is not going to do anything just focus on the start button so when the user will press press the start button then there will be a new frame and then on that new frame initially there will be a timer and that timer will be like three two one and then go so when there is go then the user can start playing the game so this is what this function is going to do so initially when this function as soon as this function is called we're gonna basically uh, change the background color of our screen and that uh, the basically the color of the background color will be basically the color of the road so we already have defined the rgb value for uh, this thing which is basically 47 47 47 and, and it will basically give it uh, the color of a road okay so we'll just fill our display screen with this um road color and uh, this fill function is actually very very important so i think that i already have explained it but if not then let me just explain it once again so basically this fill function actually clears out the previous frame and then display everything updated so this fill function is actually very very important and we need to call it basically when there is fail then we need to call that function in our game loop so we'll just call this function in our game loop so we haven't created our game loop yet uh, but we will create it um probably in the next or maybe the next video after that so uh in here we'll just create that main loop uh, right here in this function main that we are calling it but we haven't created yet but we will create it and then start working on it in the next video so display dot fail and uh, then i will just define the coordinates of my road so road x uh, will be let's say 200 pixels along x axis and then road y will be uh, minus 580 pixels along y axis and uh, then we will have trees as well so tree x1 will be zero along x axis and then tree uh, y1 will be zero along y axis as well and uh, then we will have another tree as well so tree x2 will be uh, 605 along x axis and then tree y2 will be zero pixels along y-axis so yeah now in here 
we'll just create another instance but first of all let me just scroll it down okay so right now we just create an instance of uh, a class uh, that we have in the other file and basically this file this class class is named as uh dodge car so right in here just name this uh, call which is dodge car and then obviously we need to pass one display so display and uh, now since what timer will start from three so i'll just create a variable and i will just start that i will say that i'll just uh, name this variable as at start time equal to three now this timer will be reduced after every one second as soon as 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 long as it doesn't reach zero so right in here i'll just say that while uh, at start time is greater than or equal to zero so as long as this condition is true so this w is small as long as this condition is true then it will be basically inside this loop and basically we will just display um three images so uh, first of all um start number dot blade image so we have this function inside this car which is basically for displaying images okay the first argument we need to pass is basically our road image so we just named it as road image one and then the coordinates of that road road x that we have defined in this video and then it it is uh, road y okay so let me just add a comment right here i just say that calling function to blade road image and uh, let me just copy it because i'm lazy so copy and paste and uh, in here i'll just change it to trim image 2 and then yeah so yeah i need to basically yeah no it is basically it is tree uh image one and then i need to change the coordinates so it is uh tree x one uh, and then tree y one and uh, in here basically we are calling yeah we are doing the same thing and i'll just copy again this line of code so copy and i'll just paste it right in here and this time it will be tree image number two it is yeah tree image number two and then tree x2 and then tree uh y2 so yeah and uh, now in here we'll just add a condition if that timer has been equal to zero means that we want to display a message and uh, that message will be basically the go message so we have created this function on uh, display message uh, that we are using for displaying any message so the first argument it takes is basically the text and then the second argument it takes is basically the text size so it will be uh, 150 pixels and then basically the height basically where we want to display it so it would be width divided by two and then height divided by two and then the color of this text which will be black if this condition is true then we'll just display this message go or else if this condition is not true then we're going to enter inside the else block and then we will just display message and then we just convert it into string and then we'll just say that at start time and then the uh, the size will be 150 pixels and then again it will be width divided by 2 which is basically the coordinate so width divided by 2 and then height divided by 2 and then the color which is black okay so now in here outside the else block so when this loop will be called one time then we will just reduce this variable to negative one and just we need to make sure that this loop is called uh, after every one second so this value will be reduced after every one second but first of all let me just decrement its value and then later on we will just deal with it so at start time negative equal to one and uh, now we need to basically since we are putting something on the screen pygame dot display dot update and uh, now in here this is basically a little trick so clock dot take one means that this while loop will be called after every one second and then after every one second this value will be reduced so initially the value of this thing will be true so this condition will be true and it will continue displaying these images and on here it will be checked so initially this condition will be false so it will not display this message instead it will display this message so initially it will be three 
because we have set its value equal to three. So initially it will be, so it will display this message three. And then in here, it would reduce its value equal to, uh, so initially it, it was three and then it, in here it will, be, it will be reduced to two. And then in here, we're just calling this function after every one second. So after, after one second is passed, this function will be called once again. And then again, these images will be displayed. And again, this condition will be false. Then again, it will display, this time it will, it will display two because in the previous loop, its value has been reduced to negative one, means it was now two, it was previously two, and now in here it will display two. And then again, this function will be called after one second, and then it will be one and then it will be zero and then this time this condition will be true and this thing will be called basically we will have now go on the screen and then again it, its uh, value will be reduced to negative one this time after zero it will be negative one so this condition will be false and it will just came out simply out of the while loop so this is what we need to do for this function this function was simply for our timer so uh, in the next video we need to work only on one more function and that is going to be the most important function for this game and that is going to be the main function. So in that main function we will have the game loop and basically we will control our entire game through this main function. So just get ready for the next video because the next video is going to be very very important and this function is actually very very lengthy. It is I think like 150 or I think like 200 lines of code that we need to write for uh, this function so we'll just cover it in uh, we will just cover it in two or maybe three videos so yeah that's it for this video thank you for watching and i'll see you guys next time all right guys in this video we are going to create our final function for this video and we will name this function as main and if you remember we are calling this function uh, from here and then we are calling this function from here as well. Now in this video, we will create this function. And now basically from this function, we will control our entire game and then we will have our game loop function uh, in that function as well. Okay, so now let's create this function uh, and, we will, and we will create this function right here. So dev and then the name of this function and it takes no arguments. Okay, now the first thing that we will do inside this function is that we will create two instances of this class dodge cars that we have created in this file okay now why do i need to create two instances well basically we have to do basically from that instance we will be doing different things so that is why i'm just creating two instance just to make things more clear and then more understandable okay so uh, i will just name my first instance as obj1 and we'll set its value equal to that class dodge cards and then the only, only argument we need to pass is basically the display and then i'm going to create another object and i will name this object as obj2 and again we will set its value equal to dodge cards and we'll just pass what display okay so now we have these two objects now we'll just create a tuple of objects so i will name my tuple as um objects objects and I will set its value set its value equal to a tuple and now inside this tuple we will just pass both of these objects obj1 and then obj2 okay so now we have uh, these two uh, objects inside a tuple so let me just add a command so i will just say that it is basically the tuple of objects okay so now i will just create uh, another instance and uh, i will just uh, name this instance as life and again i will put it value equal to uh, dodge cards and uh, again we need to pass over display now this instance from this instance we will control basically we will display our life so in here i'll just add a command i'll say that object to display life okay so now we have uh, this thing and uh, now we need to define the coordinates of our card not the opinion card but our card so uh, i will just create two instance and uh, and my first instance will be where I want my card to appear along x-axis. So let's say on x-axis it will be width uh, multiplied by uh, 0 0.4 and that is going to be uh, the x-coordinate. So x-coordinate uh, of uh, my car. So car, okay, and the next variable, let me just first of all scroll it down. So car x and then car y, and this time it will be equal to height multiplied by 0 0.8. And that is going to be the y uh, coordinate of my car. Okay, so now we have the x and y coordinate, and now we need to define the height and width of our car as well. So right in here, I will just create uh, another two variables, and the first variable, we will name it as car width 
and it will be equal to let's say my car width will be 64 pixels and then my car height so height will be equal to let's say 104 uh, pixels now you can add a comment right here uh, and you can say that width car uh, width and then again you can just add another comment right here and you can say that it is basically my car height okay uh, so now we have the car width and height and now we'll just create another instance and i'll just name this instance as uh, previous score and i'll set its value equal to um, this class touch car and again we need to pass our display and this object uh, is for displaying object uh, to display my previous score so previous score let me stop it object to display previous score and uh, now in here uh, i will just create a variable and i will just name this variable as uh, road count and i will set its value equal to one now you, you will just come to know about this object uh, later on as we use it in this function okay so now since basically my car will be moving um basically towards the left and right side as i press the left and right arrow key so basically it will be changing its coordinates along x and y axis so for this i will i will just be creating two uh, another two variables that is exchange that is at how much pixel it will change its position when i press the left and right arrow key along x axis so initially we will set this value equal to zero because it will only change its position along x axis uh, when i press the left and right arrow key so when uh, my left and uh, right arrow key is not pressed, then it will not change its position along x axis. So that's so that why we are setting this value equal to zero. And then similarly, we'll just create another variable, a uh, y change. And now our car will basically change, uh, it's basically change its value along y axis as well when I press the upward arrow key. So initially, uh, just like the x change, we'll set its value equal to zero as well. Okay, and now we just create another variable right here. And that variable, that variable uh, is basically the right end of the road and uh, we'll set its value equal to 600. And this variable is basically, let me just add a command, the right end of the road. Okay, uh, so now we have the road R and uh, now since we have the, we will have open end cars on our uh, screen as well. So uh, in here I have created a function for this. Uh, and I, I have named this function as open end cars and now this open end car function is basically returning three things first of all the current open end car and in here it will basically randomly return either the first car second car or the or the third car so in here it is returning the op uh, the open end uh, current car and then the open end car open end current car width and then the open end car current uh, height as well so right in here since it is returning three things i will just create three variables and i will just name my first variable as current underscore car one and then i will name my second variable as opponent uh, car underscore width one and then opponent car underscore height one and we'll set its value equal to that double object um so objects and then uh, in here we will just uh, i'm just talking about my first object so i need to specify the uh, index number of my first object which is at zero and now with that instance since it is basically the instance of that dodge class uh, class so uh, in here we'll just call this function open and cars and this open and car function will return on uh, these three things and then we'll store it in these three variables okay and now basically uh, our open and car will be along some coordinates so for the coordinates of the open and car I have created another function in that class and I have named this function as open and car coordinates and the job of that function is basically to return the coordinates of my open and cars that is the, this coordinate and then this coordinate so again since it is, it is returning two things um, so I will just create uh, two variables and I will just name my first variable as open end car uh, underscore start x1 and then opponent car underscore start y1 and I will set this value equal to objects and then my first object and then I will just call the coordinate function that is the opponent car coordinates okay so now we have on the current car height and weight and then its coordinates as well now since our opponent cars 
will be moving on the screen basically in the opposite direction with some speed. So now I'm going to define uh, variables for the speed of all of the, all of the opponent three car speeds. So um, I will just create first variable and I'll just name this variable as opponent car underscore speed one. And let's say uh, the uh, speed of my first car will be seven and then opponent car underscore uh, speed two and it will be seven as well. And then opponent car, opponent car speed three and let's say that it will be nine. Okay, so now we have these three speeds. Now we'll just uh, store all of these three speeds in a list. So right in here, now we just create a list and I'll just name this in a list as opinion car speeds. And we set this value equal to a list and now inside this list, we will just store all of these speeds. So opinion car speed number one, opinion car speed number two, and then opinion car speed number Three. Okay, so now we have this list and uh, you can add a comment right here and you can say that initializing the speed of cars. Okay, so now we have that, that list and uh, now in here I will just create um, basically three variables and uh, since uh, my car will be moving at some speed so I'm basically assigning the speeds to my opponent cars. So basically the speed will be added. So that is, I'll just, I'll just say that opponent car and then in here I'll just uh, point towards my first car and then second car. So add underscore speed two and this time it will be opponent cars speed, the second car speed and then I will just add speed three and we'll set this value equal to open and car that list and then the last item in that list which is that index number two. Okay, so now since um, the speed of the open and car will be increased as we move on, as we move on further in the game. So once the score reaches a certain limit, then the speed of the open and car will be increased as well. So that is why we have created all of these three variables. Okay, so now we have these variables as well and uh, now in here, what I'm gonna do is that uh, I will just uh, create another variable and I'll just name this variable as uh, opinion car speed underscore up equal to 15. And this variable will be for the speed will be increased when the upper arrow key is pressed. Okay, uh, so now, I will just create another variable and I will just name this variable as a second car underscore first underscore time and we will set its value equal to one. And you will just come to know about this variable uh, as we move on in this function, function. Okay, so let me just now scroll it down. Okay, so now we have basically the coordinates of the opponent cars and then the coordinates of our car as well. Now I'm gonna specify the coordinates of my road and then side trees. So right in here, I'll just add a command and I'll just say that uh, coordinates for setting the image of road and side trees. Okay, so now first of all, let me just uh, specify the coordinates of my road. So road X will be let's say 200 pixels along X axis and then road Y will be minus 550 pixels along Y axis. And then similarly, I need to specify the coordinates of my tree as well. So since we have two trees, tree X1, the uh, coordinate of my first tree, our uh, tree will be zero pixels along X axis and then for y axis for my second tree, it will be um, minus 580. And now I need to specify the coordinate of my second tree as well. So it will be x2 and it will be, let's say six or five pixels along x axis. And then for y, it will be three y2 will be equal to um, minus 580. Okay, so now our, our road will also be moving. So I will say that my uh, road should move with a speed of five. 
So I have stored, created a variable and then stored that speed, that road speed uh, in this variable five, in this variable move road. Okay, uh, so now all trees will also be moving. So I will say that move tree one equal to five and then move tree two equal to five as well. Okay, so in here I'm going to create another two variables and that is going to be the temporary speed of my cars. And uh, well, why do I need to do it? Uh, well, you will just come to know later on as we move on uh, in this game. So uh, right in here, let's say that temp tree speed one equal to five and then temp tree speed two equal to two five as well. And then temp road speed equal to five as well. Okay, now I will just set the variable count equal to zero as well. And this count variable is basically will be counting the score. And uh, then I'll just create another variable and I'll just name this variable as uh, up press count equal to one. Again, you just come to know about this variable once we use it in our game. Okay, so uh, in this video, we have defined uh, a lot of variables. Now we just define another variable and then we will end this uh, video. So uh, in here, I will just uh, basically make this variable global, which is named as game paused. Okay, now we just add uh, an if condition and I will just say that if game paused equal to equal to false. And uh, yeah, that's all. That's all we need to do for this video because in this video, we have defined a lot of variables. And now we will just work on, on all of these variables uh, in the next video, in the next two or three videos. Uh, we, have added a, we, have made a, uh, we have made a mistake right here. We need to get rid of this equal sign. Okay, so yeah, that's it for this video. In the next video, uh, we will just work on this condition. If uh, work on, on this condition when our game will be paused. So yeah, that's it for this video. I hope that you liked it. And if you have any questions related to this video or any other video in this course, then feel free to contact me through email and I will definitely get back to you as soon as I can. After the next video, thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next time. All right, guys, in this video, we will continue working inside our main function. And in the previous video, we have written this condition. And it means that when the game is not paused, then we will enter inside the body of the if block. And then in here, we'll just use this while loop and we'll say that while the game is not ended. So previously we have created this variable end game and initially we have set its value equal to false. So this not will convert this false into true. So this while loop will be true. And it actually means that as long as the game is not ended, then we want our program to stay inside this while loop. Okay, now this is going to be our uh, game loop. Okay, now inside our game loop, the first thing I need to do is to basically clear out my previous frame and then create a new frame. And now inside that new frame, everything will be updated. So for this, uh, we'll just use uh, this uh, fill function inside my game. And now in here, we can just pass any color. So I will just pass my road color. So previously we have created the RGB value of this road color, which is 47, 47, and then 47 right here. Okay, so why do we need to clear out our previous frame? Well, because uh, our car will be moving and then open end cars will also be moving and our road and trees will also be moving. So we need to make sure that everything is updated. So for this, we actually use this fill function, which clears out the previous frame and then create a new frame with everything updated. Okay, so now, since uh, we are in here, we're just making sure that everything is updated. Now in here, we'll just uh, make our road move along Y axis, obviously. So road Y uh, plus equal to move road. So in the previous video, we have created this variable. So the road, uh, road will be moving with this speed. And then similarly, we want our trees to move as well. So uh, along Y axis, obviously, so tree Y1 uh, plus equal to uh, move tree one. And then similarly, uh, tree y2 plus equal to move tree two. Okay, so now in here I will just add uh, an if statement, but first of all, let me just scroll it down. And now in here I will just say that if road y is actually greater than 10, well, this actually means that as, as soon as the road is about to cross the screen, then we will reset its value because we want a continuous road. So for uh, in here, uh, initially we have set the value of road y equal to uh, minus 580. 
then we, in here we are basically reassigning uh, the value of road y along y axis back to its initial position as soon as it basically is going to cross the is, is basically going to cross the screen okay now similarly we will do it for our trees as well and i will just say that what if uh tree y1 is also greater than 10 then what we want is that we will just reassign the value of tree y1 uh, equal to minus 580 and now similarly we will do it for tree y2 as well so tree y2 uh, equal to minus 580 okay now since our trees uh, and roads are is basically moving now we need to make sure that it appears on the screen as well so for this uh, i will just basically use uh, this object so object and uh, i need to since we have it in the form of a tuple so I'll just uh, access my first um, first object and now with that first object i will just call this function blit for our blit image that we have inside uh, this uh, file or racing underscore car underscore dot dot py so here we have this function and now it is expecting three arguments the first one is the image that we want to display on our screen and then the second and third argument it is expecting is basically the coordinates of that image so first of all we need to pass the coordinate uh, basically the image and then the coordinate and then it will display that image on the screen okay so let's do it so object dot plate image and first of all we will display our road image so road image one and then we need to pass the coordinate of our road as well so road x and then road y and then similarly we will display our trees as well so object zero dot blit image and uh, this time we need to pass our trees so tree image one and then uh tree tree x one and then tree y1 and now similarly i will just copy this line of code so copy and paste and now similarly i will just do it for tree image number two and i will just change this variable to tree x2 and then similarly tree y2 okay so now in here we are just simply uh, displaying these objects on the screen now when the user will be playing the game then it, he will be doing some kind of events now we need to check for what kind of event has actually happened so for this uh, we will be using this for loop so i will just say that for event in pygame dot um event dot get okay so first of all let me set a command and then i'll explain so this basically this is basically for uh returning the list of the occurred events okay so basically this thing will basically get any event that will happen now event is anything that like pressing a button on the keyboard or moving the mouse or pressing any button on the mouse so in here we need to look for event and this will basically get any event the user will actually perform so now in here uh, we will tell python inside this for loop what to do with these events so uh, in here i'll just tell python if event dot uh, type is equal to equal to pygame dot uh, quit then means that when the user press the cross button on the screen then we want to quit our pygame so pygame dot uh, quit and then we need to re release all the system resources so system dot exit okay so if that is the case then simply exit our game and then release all the system resources and now in here i will just uh, use another if statement and i will just say that event dot uh, type equal to equal to key up and uh, let me just add a comment right here and uh, basically this is for uh like what to do when the key is key is released okay so the user will press any key and the user will then obviously release it release it as well now in here we'll tell python what to do with the key when that when that specific key is released so in here we're just telling python that any key can be released now in here inside this if statement we will tell python uh, what to do with uh, any key with with the key that is released so we'll be only talking about uh, two types of keys inside this if block and the first one will be the escape key now what i want is that when when the user press the cross button then our pi game will be quitted then our game will be exited basically and then similarly when the user press the escape button then our game should also be quitted so this is what in here uh, we will do so i'll just say that if event dot uh, key equal to equal to k underscore 
escape so right in here when the user press the escape button then we will do the similar thing that we will exit first of all our y game and this will basically exit our game and then we will release all the system resources here as well okay so now why i'm just using this key up so when the user would press the escape button our game will not be quitted it will only quit when that escape key is released after pressing simple as that and now similarly uh, i will just add in condition for my pause uh, for for pausing the game as well so uh, if that is not the case and that event dot key is actually equal to key underscore p which means the user will press the p button uh, on my keyboard and then what i want is that by pressing on the key uh, the p button and then obviously when when that p button is released after pressing it then what i want my game to be paused so for this we have created a function uh, and we name that function as pause okay now let's just go to this function and see what is the functionality of this function so i'm just pressing control and then pressing my mouse and now in here we have created this function which will actually pause our game so first of all in here we will just play the pause music and then we are just making this a variable global and then in here we are assigning a game pause equal to true because uh, the user has now pressed the p, p button uh, actually it has released the p button after pressing it then uh, i'm just telling uh, python that as long as my game is paused then keep displaying this message pause and then uh, it will basically display two messages on the screen that is the continue button and this continue button will actually uh, make the game continue from the point where it, where it was paused and then similarly this quit button will quit our pie game simple as that so this is what this post function is actually doing okay so now let's just go to this uh, back to this um, our game loop function where we are where we are actually calling our pause button okay so remember that when i press the p button uh, our game will not be paused it will only be paused when i actually release my p button after pressing it because we have this, these two events inside this key up function basically inside this key up condition okay so now we have on uh, these two things as well and uh, now in here outside the body of this if statement i will just add another if statement and in here i will just say that event dot type equal to equal to pi game uh, dot key uh, down if you spell it so key down okay uh, so this basically means uh, that what to do when a key is pressed okay so now in here we we're just talking about a couple of uh, keys that uh, we need to be that that we need to press in order to control our car so basically when the user will press the left arrow key then our car will move uh, towards the left side of the screen and then similarly if the user press the um, right arrow key then the, uh, then the car will move towards the right uh, side of the screen so and now at what pace it should move uh, towards the left and right side so first of all i will just say that if the pressed key so event dot key equal to equal to uh, pi game dot key underscore left so if the pressed key is basically the left arrow key then what we want is that i want my car to move towards the left side so previously i have created two variables uh, that is the exchange now basically since i want my car to move towards the left side obviously along x axis then i'll just say that exchange will now be equal to minus six that is oops it is exchange yeah so exchange will now be equal to negative six okay so um, let me just add a comment right here and uh, this is actually um what to do when the key is actually when the key is uh, pressed okay so this is what it will do and now similarly we will do it for the right arrow key as well so elif event uh, dot key equal to equal to pi game dot key underscore right then in here uh, we need to change uh, exchange as well so in here we have used this negative six here because when we move towards uh, the left side along x axis then then the value of x actually decreases so that is why we have to use here negative six and now similarly i'm just use here uh, positive six because the value of x actually actually increases as we move towards the right side okay so uh, this is what we need to do and uh, now in here 
the when the user will press the upward arrow key then uh, the speed of our, uh, then the speed of our car will be increased and then same will same will goes for our roads and trees as well so uh, right in here um basically first of all let me just scroll it down okay so yeah i need to make sure that it is clearly visible so in here i've just uh, add another lf statement for my upward arrow key so if the pressed key is actually equal to pi game dot key underscore up and this basically means when the upward arrow key is actually pressed and now in here uh, we will just um, add a condition right here and let's say that if up press count equal to equal to one and you just come to know why do I need to add this condition uh, later on as I move uh, in this function okay so if that is the case then the coordinate of my car along y-axis so car y will be actually decreased by negative 15 and uh, now in here outside this if statement but inside this elif block what i want is that i want i will basically increase uh, its value uh, basically the value of up press count uh, to plus one so now in here i will just now move my road uh, a little faster when the upward arrow key is pressed so i'll just say that uh, move uh, road will now be equal to 10 so i think previously it was 5 and now it will be 10 when the upward arrow key is pressed and uh, now um, a move trees will be uh, 10 as well and then similarly uh, move tree 2 will also be equal to 10 and now in here i will just create a variable uh, that is add speed 2 basically it was previously created uh, so it will be at speed 1 and now so previously i think it was 7 and now i will just uh, double it uh, by uh, putting its value equal to 14 and now in here um, let me just scroll it down i will just add another condition and i will just say that if count is actually greater than or equal to 10 which means that when my score is actually greater than 10 then what i want is that i want to increase uh, the speed so basically the speed of my second car uh, that will be now equal to let's say 17 okay so now you can just add some other condition like uh, when the score is greater than or equal to 20 then you can just add the speed of the third car uh, and so on but uh, i'm not doing it uh, i'm just simply uh, doing it uh, when my score is actually greater than 10 for my second car okay so now uh, let me just uh, scroll it up okay so for this elif block i will just add another uh, outside this elif block i will just add another elif and i will just say that elif uh, event uh, now let me just scroll it down uh, you, you just need to make sure that uh, this elif is actually outside uh, this elif block so elif and uh, now let me just scroll it down to make sure it is visible so uh, event dot key so this is actually for um when my down arrow key is actually pressed so i'm just say that a uh, pi game dot uh key underscore down okay now what to do when the down uh, down arrow key is actually pressed then we'll just reassign the value of y change equal to five oops it is five okay so now uh, in here uh, outside okay now outside uh, basically this if uh, basically this if block i will just add another elif, elif statement uh, so right in here you just need to make sure that yeah it is right here so let me just first of all scroll it down and it is right here okay so uh, now in here i'll just add another elif statement so for this if statement i'm still i was stating that when what to do when the key is actually pressed and now in here i will just state that what to do when the key is actually released so elif event dot type equal to equal to pi game dot key underscore key up now what to do when the key is actually released so this is important so let me just add a command uh, when the key is released okay so in here i will just say that if the release key is actually the left or right arrow key so in here i'll just add uh, an if statement i will just say that if the released key is equal to equal to pi game dot key, uh, the left arrow key so it is left or it may be possible that the right arrow key is released 
so let's say that um, uh, event dot key equal to equal to my game dot key underscore write or it may be possible that the downward arrow key is released so let's say that event dot key equal to equal to y game dot key underscore down now what to do uh, so that in here when that key is actually released then we do not want the car to basically change its position so along x-axis so basically our car will change its position along x-axis uh, that we have previously stated that is it will actually change its position along x and y axis uh, right here when the left or right arrow key is pressed but when the left and right arrow key is actually released then we do not want any change in position of my car along x axis so right in here inside uh, this if block i will just say that now my x change will be equal to zero and similarly my y change will be zero as well so y underscore change will be equal to zero as well and now in here i will just uh, add another elif statement and i'll just say that elif so event dot key equal to equal to pi game underscore key so it is pi game dot key underscore up and when the upward arrow key is actually released uh, so let me scroll it down then uh, what i want is that i will just first of all add a, uh, add a condition right here and if that can and if uh, the value of up press count is actually greater greater than one so previously we have incremented this value so right in here when the up press count value is greater than one then previously we were just uh, decreasing the value of car along y-axis and now we will just put it back to its initial position uh, with, and this time we will just uh, basically add uh, this value so previously we were, we were subtracting it and now we will just add this value because now the released key is actually the upward arrow key along obviously we need to increase its value along y-axis because our car will be moving along y-axis and now similarly uh, we will just uh, basically reset its value equal to one okay so now outside this if block basically this if block uh, i will just say that at uh, speed one equal to my opponent uh, car opponent car speeds and now we'll just talk about my first car so I'll just add the index number of my first car okay and now in here uh, we just say that move my road and that road will be equal to temp uh, road speed uh, and then similarly move my trees will be equal to temp tree speed one and then similarly uh, move tree two will be equal to temp on uh, tree speed two okay and now in here uh, i will just add an if statement and i'll just say that but first of all let me just uh, scroll it down and i'll just say that if the value of my score is actually greater than or equal to 10 then what we want is that i'll just say that add speed 2 will now be equal to opponent car speeds and then my let's say second car so my, my score is greater than 10 then the speed of the opponent uh, then the speed of the second opponent car will be actually greater than the speed of my first and third opponent car so now again you can just add uh, another uh, some other conditions like uh, when the score is actually greater than 20 then uh, we want uh, the speed of the opponent car to be further increased and so on but i'm not doing it i'm just uh, trying to make it simple and then more understandable to you okay so this tutorial is uh, getting much longer so i will just end it right here and uh, then We'll, from the next video we will continue working uh, inside this function uh, we have to do a lot of more work inside this function so yeah that's it for this video uh, i hope that you liked it and uh, i will see you guys next time all right guys in this video we will continue working inside our main function so in the previous video we have handled all the events that we need to handle for this game so basically we have handled all the events inside this for loop and in this video we will just basically go outside this for loop because we will not be handling any event in this video because we have handled actually all the events that we need to handle for this video okay so now, so now we will actually go outside this for loop so you need to make sure that your cursor is actually outside the for loop so when my cursor is at line number one two and then three if these lines are visible then it would mean that i'm now i'm then outside the for loop 
So uh, right in here. So one, two, and then three. Okay, so it means that I'm now outside my for loop. Okay, so now in here, I will just change, um, make sure that my car is actually at the right coordinate. So uh, previously in the uh, event handling for loop, we have basically handled uh, the event of my car when the left or right arrow key is pressed. So in here, I just need to make sure that my car is actually at the right position uh, depending upon that event that we have handled in, uh, inside our for loop. So car x plus equal to uh, basically this variable x change. Okay, so if you remember in the previous video, x change was equal to some value when the left or right arrow key was pressed. But when the left or right arrow key was released, then this value was equal to zero. So in here, it would mean that my car will be actually moving along x-axis with basically some pace. Then in here, we have basically set some value of x change equal to some value when the left or right arrow key was pressed. So my car will then be moving along x-axis depending upon uh, what arrow key is pressed, whether the left arrow key is pressed or the right arrow key is pressed. And then similarly, it will not change uh, its position. So x change was actually zero when on the uh, right or uh, when the right and left arrow key both were released. So in here, I just, I'm just making sure that my car is exactly at the right position along x axis uh, depending upon the event. So right in here, I'll just say that uh, changing the coordinate of the car. Okay, so now we will just add some speed to our open end car. So right in here, I'll just say that open end car uh, start y plus equal to at underscore speed one. And in here, what I'm doing is that moving the uh, open end car along y axis. Okay, uh, so now uh, we will just display the images, uh, the car images on the uh, screen. So I've just used this object, uh, the first object that we have inside our tuple. And then I just I will just use this function blit image uh, that we were using to display images on the screen. Okay, so this time I will just display my car image on the screen. So it is car image and then we need to specify the coordinate. So car x, which is basically uh, this variable, car x and then uh, car y. Okay, so again, let me just add a comment uh, and I will just say that uh, blitting or I can just say that um, displaying uh, image of car to changed coordinates. Okay, so now I will just display, uh, let me just, uh, let me just uh, add this object. So object zero dot blit image and uh, this time I will just add my first opponent car and then the opponent car coordinate as well. So opponent car uh, start x1 and then opponent car start y1. Okay, so now in here, yeah. So let me first of all scroll it down. And uh, well, let me just add a comment here as well. So what I'm doing here is that I'm just displaying the image of open and car to new coordinate. Okay, so now we have this thing as well. And now we'll just add a condition right here that if my count is actually greater than or equal to 10, then we want, then we can say that two cars can appear at the same time. So right in here, uh, Basically, this variable isn't created yet, but we will create it later on. So uh, th that will be basically start y2. So basically start y1 is basically for my uh, first car along y-axis, while this variable open and car start y2 will be basically uh, the coordinate along y-axis for my second open and car. So my second open and car will only appear when my score is actually greater than 20, uh, 10. So two cars can appear at the same time. Uh, when my score is actually greater than 10. So in here, I'm just displaying uh, the first open end car, even when the score is less than 10, because we haven't added any condition right here. But in here, we are adding a condition that when my score is actually greater than or equal to 10, then we want my second open end car to appear along y axis as well. So it will actually be moving with some speed. So uh, plus equal to add 
underscore speed two. So my second opponent car will be moving at this speed. Okay, so now in here I will basically call, call an object, uh, basically this function objects, uh, and then this basically function blit image. And in here we need to pass current car image number two. So basically again, uh, we haven't created this variable yet, but we will create it uh, later on in this video. So, and then we need to pass the coordinate of my, first of all, um, x2. And uh, then in here, opponent car uh, y2 as well. Okay, so again, we haven't created either, uh, basically, any of these variable. Well, we will create it later on in this video. Okay, so now outside this if block, uh, I can basically I will just call the score function. So uh, objects, uh, basically with this object, and then we have created a function right here in this file for displaying score. So I need to pass uh, this count, which is basically counting our score. So let's just go to this function score that we have inside this file. Okay, so here we have the blit image and then the open and car, open and car coordinates, and then here we have the score. Okay, so the score will be actually uh, appearing uh, with some font so that is going to the font and then the font size will be 30 and then in here since we need to render our score because our score will be changing continuously while we are playing the game and then in here we are actually displaying the updated score on the screen okay so here here here, here what this uh, score function is doing and uh, now in here outside this if block we have actually called this function and uh, now we will be displaying a uh, previous score as well. So I will just say that so we already have created uh, the object for uh, our previous score. So previous score and then uh, previous score. So basically this object is also the object of this uh, class uh, dodge car. So we have actually created basically this class. So we have created this object uh, previously uh, in this section. So a previous score, uh, and uh, this one, let me just add a comment, uh, is basically for displaying the previous score. Okay, and this one is for displaying the current score. Okay, so now let's just go to this function previous score as well, which is inside this file. So here we have the init function, blit function, open in car, score, enter, and here we have the previous function. Okay, so I already have explained uh, what basically this actually, this whole thing is actually doing. So and the only thing we need to explain, uh, I need to explain once again is basically this thing. So what it, what it will do is that it will basically return the number of items that uh, that are stored uh, inside this file and I'm inside that file we have listed down all the scores that I have scored previously and In here we have to subtract negative one because we have to get the last coordinate and this length function actually return the number of items and Since indexes start from zero So that's why we have to subtract negative one so that we can access the last item that that, that that is basically stored inside this file and that last item will be actually our previous score and then in here we are actually displaying our previous score simple as that okay so uh, now we have called the previous score function as well and now we will dis uh, display our life as well so again we have created a separate object for what dodge class and that object was life and that object will be basically for displaying the life uh, and now in here we need to pass our live variable that we have created so if i can just show you yeah so initially we have set its value equal to two which means that the uh basically the user will have uh two lives first of all we have two lives and then one life and then zero lives so actually he will have three lives uh, to play the game and uh, let me just add a comment right here as well uh displaying the life of the player okay so now we need to write an if statement and that if statement is actually very very important and uh, in here uh, let me just first of all write that condition and then i will explain so if my coordinate of my car uh, along x axis is actually less than 200 or car x is actually greater than my width minus the car width so here we have this variable or we can just say that the coordinate of my car along y-axis plus my 
car height is actually greater than height or my coordinate of my car along a y-axis is actually less than zero then it will actually enter inside this condition now what this condition is all about so for this let me just add um, a comment here as well and it is basically testing that so testing and it is basically testing that if the car so if the car touched the sides of the road okay so if that is the case uh, then what we're gonna do is that we'll call a function crash and for crash we need to pass uh, the coordinates of car along x and y axis and then we need to pass uh, the score uh, the current score okay so what this condition is all about so you should remember uh, what is the width and height of our road basically what is the left and right end of our road so if the coordinate of my car is uh, along x axis is actually less than um, basically this road uh, basically this uh, x axis or along uh, along x axis then or it is greater than the width minus car weight now why why do i have to subtract car weight because i need to make sure that the right end of my car actually will actually detect its collision with the with the sides of the road so if i just don't add it right here then it will not uh, detect the collision of my car along x axis with the side of the road it will actually detect the collision of my left side of the road the left side of the car with the road so you need to subtract well you can just um remove this thing and then see how your car will actually detect its collision uh, with the road so you can just play around with this thing and we will play around with this thing uh, when i just execute this whole program and then similarly this one is for my uh, car height because we need to make sure that my y coordinate also should not uh, collide with the sides of the road so this is what in this condition we are testing that if the car is actually touching the sides of the road or not and if it is touching then in here we are actually calling the crash function means that our life will be reduced and if uh, and if we have no life then our game will be over okay so now let's just move to this function crash uh, to see what we have inside this function okay so first of all we are actually displaying uh, this uh, crash sound and then uh, in here we are actually playing it and then we are calling this explosion function and this explosion function will actually display the explosion image on the screen and then in here we are in here we are actually displaying this function is actually displaying the current score and then this life count function will actually reduce the number of lives so if the uh, number the left life was less than zero or negative one then our game will simply be over or if it is greater than uh, zero then it will be reduced by one by one value so uh, this is what this function crash is actually doing and now let's go back all right here okay so now we will just add one more if statement in this video so that if statement uh so let me just first of all write it down so open in car underscore start by one is actually greater than my height the height of my screen and uh, this condition is actually for let me just add a comment uh if the open in car crosses the bottom of the screen okay so basically uh, in this variable height we have stored the height of our screen so if the opponent car will act the the opponent car coordinate along y-axis will get greater than my height of the screen it means that the opponent car has actually crossed the bottom screen then what we're going to do is that it will actually in enter inside a condition and we actually have to do a lot of things inside this condition so this tutorial is again getting much longer so i will just explain um what we need to do for this condition uh, in the next video so for now thank you for watching and i will see you guys next time all right guys in this video we will continue working inside our main function actually we will continue working inside our game loop so let's get started with this video so in the previous video we have written this condition which states that if my opponent car along y-axis is greater than the height of my screen so it so it actually means 
if my opponent card crosses the bottom of the screen then what I want is that it will actually enter inside this if block and now in here first of all I will just uh, check if my score is actually greater than 10 or not if it is then I want uh, my car basically another opponent card to appear so right in here I will just say that uh, current um, underscore uh, car one and then it's width and height so opponent car underscore width one and then opponent car underscore height one and that is going to be equal to uh, my object so ob objects and then i will just uh, specify my first object and then i will just call this function that we have inside this file uh, racing underscore car underscore dot dot py okay so uh, in here we're just calling this function and now we need to basically tell python uh, where do i need to put that open and car so for this we have another function inside this file uh, basically inside uh, this class and that function is actually named as open and car coordinates so uh, here we have this function yeah here we have this function and now in here we need to pass the right end of the road as well so right in here let's just call this function uh, so basically it will be along x and y axis so i'll just say that open and car uh, start x1 and then open and car um, uh, underscore start y1 and that is going to be equal to uh, my objects and then uh, let's just access our first object which is at index number one dot opponent car coordinates and now we need to pass the right end of the road so uh, this is what we're gonna pass okay so that is the case and now in here if my score is actually greater than 10 then we want multiple car multiple opponent car on the screen as well so in here i will just write a condition basically uh, i will just write a while loop and i will just say that as long as this while loop will be true then the opponent car will keep appearing on our screen so let me just first of all write the condition and then we'll explain so if my opponent car uh, x1 is greater than my opponent car opponent car uh, it is basically start x2 again uh, this will throw an error because we haven't uh, created this variable yet but we will create it uh, in this video so if that is the case and uh, then in here we need to check something else as well uh, that opponent car so make sure that you spell it right so it is and and uh, opponent car underscore start x1 is actually less than my opponent car start x2 plus my opponent car with two so again it will throw an error because we haven't uh, created either this variable or this variable well we will create it um in this video so basically uh what i'm saying is that if there is so basically in short this condition actually means that if there is some room for my second car to appear as long as there is a room on the screen for another car then this condition will always be true and my opponent car should keep appearing so this is what this condition states and now in here if that condition will be true as long as this condition will be true uh, what we want is that uh, so we want our current uh, basically we want our opponent car to appear so i'll just say that opponent car car one and then opponent car uh, underscore width one and then opponent car height one and that is going to be equal to again this thing so object zero dot opponent car so make sure that you spell it right open and kind and takes no argument and now similarly uh, i will just copy this line of code because we have to write it again because we need to specify the coordinates as well okay so uh in here you need to make sure that you just pass the right end of the road okay so if that is not the case then uh let me just uh make my screen more clearer to you and let me just scroll it down a little bit if my score is actually not greater than 10 so multiple cars will appear on the screen if my score is actually greater than 10 so if that is not the case then it will just enter inside the else block so first of all it will check if the score is greater than 10 then we will just say that so in here basic inside this this thing we are actually saying that if there is some room for another car then another car then multiple cars should appear as long as there is room on the screen and then if that is not the case then we'll just simply check that if uh, my opponent car crosses the bottom of the screen means that my opponent car actually disappear from the screen then what i want is actually what i want is actually is that i want my new opponent car to appear on the screen 
So uh, for this, basically we have to write these two lines of code once again. So let me just copy it and I'll just paste it right here. Okay, now we'll just move outside uh, this else block. And uh, now in here, uh, I will just increment my score as well. So right in here, I'll just say that count plus equal to one. Okay, so now again, let me just scroll it down to make sure that it is visible. Okay, so now we can basically, uh, so if my basically opponent car, so right in here, if the opponent car actually crosses uh, my screen, actually it crosses the bottom of the screen, uh, then what I want is that, I will just say that opponent car speeds and then my first opponent car speed should increase with this pace. So 0 0.005, which is actually very, very less. And uh, then what I want is that I will just increase uh, the road speed as well. So temp, uh, temp road speed uh, plus equal to, it will be let's say 0 0.004. And then I want my road uh, speed to be increased as well. So right in here, I'll just say that um, move road, uh, move road, plus equal to uh, 0 0.004. And now similarly, I want my move, uh, my trees to move as well. So move tree one plus equal to 0 0.004. And then similarly, I will just say that move tree two plus equal to 0 0.004. So this is basically for the road speed. And uh, now I will basically just increase this variable as well, which is the temp tree speed one plus equal to 0 0.004 and then similarly temp road speed 2 uh, plus equal to 0 0.004 okay so now in here we'll just add another condition and i'll just say that if my score is ex is basically is exactly equal to 10 then it will actually inside enter inside this condition and then we will just uh, make a new opponent car to appear on the screen. So uh, basically that will be opponent car number two and uh, then similarly opponent car uh, that will be opponent car start. So that will basically we need to pass the coordinate here. So opponent car underscore with two and uh, yeah, opponent car with two and then opponent car underscore height two. So height two and that is gonna be equal to uh, objects and then my first object and then we need to call, uh, call this function open as car. Okay, and now similarly, uh, let me again scroll it down to make sure that it is visible. And now similarly, I will just say that open and car start x2 uh, because we need to uh, tell Python where do we need to put this, uh, where, we, where we do, where we do, where we, where we need to put this open and car. So open and car and then open and car, uh, let me just open and car x1, this time it will be x2 and uh, basically it will be y2. So y2 and that is going to be equal to my, this object and then zero dot open and car coordinates and you need to make sure that you just pass the right end of the road. Okay, so now basically let me just scroll it to the left and then scroll it up. Okay, so now I'll just go outside this if condition. So make sure that it is at one, two and three. So make sure that your cursor here is at line number three. So here it is and now let me just scroll it to the left completely and here one, two and then three. Okay, so now we are just outside or if block. And now in here, uh, well, this tutorial is again getting much longer. So I will just end this tutorial right here. Uh, and in the next video, we will finish this uh, game. And then the video after that, we will execute this whole program. And then if there was there, there is some kind of error, then we will remove it. And then we will just play this game. And then I will just explain that whole code as well. So thank you for watching and I will see you guys next time. Okay guys, so in the previous video, we have written this condition for our first opponent car that when my score is actually greater than 10 and then when my first opponent car actually crosses the bottom of my screen, then we have written this whole code for our first opponent car. Now we need to do it for our second opponent car as well that when it will cross the bottom of the screen. So uh, basically uh, in here, we have introduced our second opponent car when my score will be exactly equal to 10. Now in here, 
uh, what I'm going to do is that I will just do it for my uh, second open end card as well. So for this, I will just copy this whole lines of code and I will just paste it. So you need to make sure that you are now outside uh, this if block. So uh, I will just scroll it down and my cursor should be right here and now I'm outside on that if block. And I'll just paste that whole code right here. But now in here, we just need to add another if statement because in here we need to tell Python that uh, when my open end car, that is my second open end car, Y coordinate actually, actually crosses on uh, the bottom of the screen. So I'll just uh, type here if um, my open end car, Y2 is actually greater than height, just like we were doing for our uh, first open end car. Now I'll just give it some space to make sure that it is actually inside this if block. Okay, so now we just change it to open end car, uh, current car two, and then open end car with two, and then high two, and uh, we do not need to make uh, any further changes in this line, and then x two, and then y two, and then similarly uh, x two, and in here it will be x one, and here it should be x2 and here it should be x1 and then here it should be my first width and then in here it will be current car number two and then uh, width two and then high two and uh, then x2 and then y2 okay so this is what we need to do for our second open end card this is exactly the same condition that we have written in the previous video okay so uh, now outside this while loop so right in here and now let me just scroll it down to make sure that it is clearly visible i will just add another if statement and i will just say that if second and car second uh, second car uh, second car first time that is that is if my second car is appearing for the first time I put it equal to one and uh, I will just say that so previously we have created this variable and we have set its value equal to one so this actually this variable is actually saying that if my uh, second car that is the second opponent car is appearing for the first time then what uh, what we what we want to do is that we will just assign a speed to it so open end car speed and then we are talking about our second car so we need to specify the value the the car speed value that we store that we have stored in the tuple at uh, basically at, at index number one which is basically this our second speed and we'll just say that uh, we'll put it equal to 0 0.015 okay and then similarly uh, we will just increment its value because once the second card is appeared first time then this condition uh, will then should be false so plus equal to one and uh, then outside this if block i will just say that open end car speeds and then my second car speed should be increased with this base okay and now we just need to increment our score as well so plus equal to one Okay, so now we need to write a couple of more condition and then our game will be absolutely ready. And that condition will be for when my open end car actually crashes with our car. So basically we will write this condition. So you need to make sure that your cursor is at the right position. So you need to make sure that your cursor is actually outside now this if block. So right in here, we will just check for this condition and uh, let me just add a comment that uh, basically this condition is for uh, checking crash uh, with the opponent card. Okay, so now let me just scroll it down and now let's write this condition. Okay, so basically for uh, detecting collision, uh, there are basically two methods uh, that you can use. First of all, what you can do is that you can just form rectangle uh, around um, the opponent cars and then over car and then simply and then simply just use uh, the building function uh, in Pygame collide to check the collision. But that is going to be the most easiest way and then you can do it that way. But I'm going to be basically doing it by checking the coordinates uh, of my opponent car and then my car so this is what this is how i will just do it but you can just do it the other way if you want so right in here i'll just say that if my open so let me just first of all write and then i will explain so if my uh, my car coordinate along y-axis is actually less than my opponent car start y1 plus my 
opinion card height one and i'll just add a bracket right here and let's say that my car coordinate along y-axis plus my car height so it should be car height and is actually greater than opinion car start by one then so in here what i'm checking is that uh, if the y coordinate crossover and then in here if the y coordinate crossover then uh, i will just do it for my x-axis as well so right in here i've just add another if statement so in here i'm just doing it for uh, my y-axis and now in here i'll just do it for my x-axis so uh, if my car x is actually greater than my opinion car basically the coordinate of my opinion car along x-axis and car x is actually less than opinion car underscore x1 plus opinion car with one or i will just say that car x let me just move it to the next line so that it is more clearly visible so car x plus car width is actually greater than opinion car underscore x1 and my car x plus car underscore width is actually less than opinion car underscore start x1 plus my opinion car underscore width one and uh, if that is the case then what will what, if, what we will do is that it will actually inside so we are getting an error okay so now the error is gone okay so now we will just enter inside uh, this if block and means that in here we are actually checking the condition along my basically my car along y and x axis with the open car so if that is the case then obviously we'll just call crash function and for the crash function we need to pass the coordinate of our car so car y and then we'll just subtract minus 20 and then we'll just sub uh, basically pass this variable count as well okay so now we'll just add another if statement right here and i'll just say that if my score is actually greater than 10 and count is actually less than or equal to 20 so well this is just an option condition you can add it if you want so it means that when my score is actually greater than 10 or it is less than or equal to 10 and so in here what i'm saying is that if my score is actually greater than 10 and if it is actually less than or equal to 10 as well so then what i want is that i would just say that if my car y is actually less than so previously we were doing it for my first open end car and now we'll just do it for our second open end car. So car Y and then open end car start Y2 plus open end car height 2 and car Y plus car underscore height is actually greater than open end car Y2 and again in here what i'm checking is that if the y coordinate actually crossover so let me just add a comment right here that when if the y coordinate y coordinates crossover and uh, now i will just add another if statement for my x-axis as well and now in here i'll just uh, i will just say that if car x is actually greater than opinion car underscore start x2 and my car x is actually less than opinion car underscore start x2 plus my car width opinion car with 2 or in here we'll just add another another bracket and we'll say that if my car x plus car width is actually greater than opinion car underscore start x2 and car x plus car width is actually less than opinion car underscore start x2 plus the 
width of my second opponent car so opponent car with two if that is the case then again we can call the crash function so crash function and in here we need to pass uh, the coordinate for our car so that is going to be car x and then car y minus 20 and then basically our score which is basically count okay so now outside uh, basically this if block basically this if block uh, in here I will just call the update function to make sure that everything is updated and this update function is actually very very important and it actually makes sure that everything is updated so uh, pygame dot it is basically display dot update and uh, then um, our game loop function will be let's say called so clock dot take uh, and here we need to pass fps so if you remember we have created this variable fps uh, so in here we have set its value equal to 40 which means that my game loop will be called 40 times in one second and this game loop will make sure that everything is updated so basically we have used the build function uh, in pygame which will basically uh, clears out the previous frame and display the new frame with everything updated because everything will be because my cars will be moving my opponent car will be moving and my trees and my score will also be changing so we need to basically make sure that everything is updated and this is what that fill function will do it will basically clears out the previous frame and then display a new frame with everything updated it will do it 40 times in one second okay so now we have done that as well and now uh, let me just clear out all, all of these spaces that we have okay so in here we have called the enter screen function and now after it once we are done with our game we will just quit our pi game so pi game dot quit and then we'll just release all the system resources as well okay so now that's all for the coding part for this game so i have written this condition uh, basically this condition and then this condition well i will explain it once i execute this whole program because this condition will then make more sense well if i just tell you, tell you right now then it may get clear but it may be a little harder for you to understand it so in the next video uh, i will just execute this whole program and uh, probably i will be getting some errors because i might i might have done some mistakes so i will just uh, make sure that you don't waste your time i will just correct all the i will just uh, come to know about all the all the mistakes and then i will just let you know about all of this mistake in the next video if there is any mistake which is most probable that there will be mistakes so uh, in the next video we will just execute this whole program uh, basically we will play our game and then we will understand this whole game this whole uh, program so thank you for watching and i will see you guys next time all right guys so in the previous video we completed our racing car game and now in this video we will execute this whole code and then we will see what kind of error we have and then i will just explain this entire code according to that game so let's get started with this video so i have basically executed this whole code uh, after ending the previous tutorial and uh, luckily i'm just only i was only getting uh, one error so let me just execute this file which is racing underscore car underscore main dot py so uh, you will see that first of all we will have our initial screen here we have the screen so i have shown you the screen uh, in the previous video as well uh, once we created it okay so now when my cursor is actually somewhere at, at this position and then when i click on the start button so first of all when i just click on this quit button our pi game will quit and uh, we will not play our game and uh, now when i click on the start button uh, first of all we will have our screen which will have or uh, first of all we will have a, a screen which will say three two one and go and then our we will see opening cars and then we will see our road trees everything moving so let me just click on the start button and first of all you can see that we have three two one go but in here we have got an error so let's see what the error is saying so just forget about these warning messages and just concentrate on the error okay so it is saying that uh, basically this function is missing one required argument and that error is basically on line number 209 so let's go to this line and uh, uh, right in here uh, here we have to, uh, basically line number two, uh, 209 and basically in here uh, this open and car coordinate function which is basically inside um, this far uh, this racing underscore car underscore dodge dot py basically we need to pass one argument and that argument is basically the right end of the road so make sure that you just pass this argument right here and that is basically road underscore r 
Okay, so now if we just execute this whole code, this time we will have no error and now we should be able to play our game. So again, first of all, we will have our initial screen, which will first of all display the title of this game. And then we have this racing car image and then we have three, uh, three button, the start button, the ready button. Well, this ready button is doing uh, nothing. Uh, I just created it uh, to style this screen so that my screen can look uh, much awesome. And then we have this quit button. And when the user click on this quit button, it will basically quit this game. And then when the user click on the start button, then it will basically start playing this game. So notice here uh, when my mouse is actually not on this button, uh, notice that the color is actually dark green. But uh, when I just move my cursor right here on this button, as it touches the edges of the circle, you can see that the color is now changed. And then same goes for this ready button and then this quit button. So now let me just click on the start button to start playing this game. So first of all, we have the screen three, two, one and go and here we go, we have the opponent card coming in and now you can see that we have the score on the uh, top left corner and uh, you can see that we have the number of lives that are left are two and you can you will see that since our score is now less than uh, 10, so that is why we, on, we are only seeing one card at one time on our screen. But now once our score rises 10, you can now see that we now have multiple cards uh, coming, coming in on our screen. Okay, so now when I just press the upward arrow key, oops, you can see that the speed of the road is increased and then the speed of the, my opponent car is increased as well. So first of all, you need to understand the working of this game, how this game is actually working. So just notice here that when I press the uh, left arrow key, uh, my car is moving towards the left side and then when I just press the right arrow key, it is moving towards the right side. Okay, so our car will crash first of all when I just crash my car with the edges of the road and then it will crash once it crash with the opponent car. So first of all, let me just crash it. All right, so we have this crash with this red car and you can now, you, you can now see that the number of lives are now left are only one. Okay, so now let me just crash it uh, with the side of my road. So let me just crash it on the left side. See that it is now a crash and we have this explosion image. And now let me just crash it um, to the opponent car. So I'm pressing the upward arrow key and you can see that the speed of the road and uh, the speed of the trees and my opponent cars uh, are now pretty much increased. Okay, so now I'll just make it collide with the and you can see that uh, it has collided with uh, the opponent car. And now you can see that we have two buttons on the screen that is the restart button and then the quit button. Uh, so when I click on the restart button, it will restart our game. And then when I uh, click on this quit button, it will basically quit the game. And then you can see that since the number of life that was left was zero and when I crash with my opponent car, it basically displays this image which says game over. And now when I click, so in here you can see that the previous high score that I scored was uh, 278 and then my current score uh, is nine and then I have zero number of lives left. Okay, so now if I just press on the restart button, you can see that it, again, uh, you are seeing the screen, we say three, two, one, zero and go and everything is actually updated on the screen. You can see that again, the number of lives that are left are two, and then I can just move my uh, car towards the left or right side by pressing the left or right arrow key. Okay, so basically when I just uh, press the left arrow key, it is moving towards the left side, but when I release it, it just stop at that point. And then same goes for my right side, uh, right arrow key as well. So yeah, that is basically the working of this game. And now let me just explain the code. Uh, with this game. So I hope that you now have understand how this game is actually working. So now let's just understand this entire code. Okay, so first of all, let me just execute it uh, once again. All right, so initially we have the screen. First of all, it says that it is made by me and then we have the title of, this, uh, title of the game and then we have this image and then we have these three buttons. And then the title here is saying the racing car game and then we have this uh, car icon on this uh, on our screen as well. So now let's just, uh, let me just uh, basically explain this whole code. Okay, so first of all, we have imported these things and uh, then we are basically importing each and everything from uh, this class. And then first in here we have initialized our pie game and then we are defining our two variables for the width and height of our screen. And then we have the FPS rate uh, and that FPS rate is basically uh, how many number of times my game loop will be called in one second. And now why do I need to define my FPS, F FPS rate? Well, this is because if I just don't define the FPS, my game will run differently on, on different operating system. 
uh, it will run much better uh, on operating system that are very very good while it may not run as that much good on other operating systems and then we just defined the rgb values of some colors are uh, like for example the uh, red color and then green yellow and then light yellow and then black and then we have this uh, road color which is basically the color of my road okay so then we have the spaces let me just remove the spaces and then in here we have basically uh, basically we have this display uh, that, that we have stored in this variable uh, and then we basically created our display with this width and then this height and then we set the title and then we created this clock so and then we just loaded all of these images the car images and then the tree images and then the uh, this basically car image which I named as Bugatti and then the game icon image and then and here we just set the uh, title on our screen and then the number of lives that we have is two so it's basically three because uh, it is basically two one and then zero number of lives left and then when the car collide with the open end car on the side of the road then our game will be over and then we have um, basically this variable for uh, basically this instance for this class and then well let me just first of all explain what we have inside on uh, this file that is, that is racing underscore car underscore dot short py Okay, so first of all, we have inside uh, this class, we have this class, which is very, very important class on uh, Dodge cars. And then we have the initializer function of this class. And then here we are basically passing the display. Okay, so in here, uh, we are basically creating the RGB value for some colors. And then we are basically loading our game over image. And then we have in this variable, we are storing our score. And now we are using this function to display images on our screen. And the other command we need to pass is basically first of all the image and then the coordinate where we want to put this image on our screen. And then we obviously we are using this uh, function with this uh, display instance because we want to display our image, images on our screen that we named as display. Okay, then we have this function open and car. Uh, so, so in here, this uh, in this open and car, we are just simply uh, returning our current car and then we are providing, we are basically returning the width of the open end car and then the width or the height of my op open end car as well so in here we basically created uh, a tuple and now inside uh, basically a list in, and inside that list we loaded all the car images and then in here we have uh, created another list in which we define the height and width of each of my open end car and then basically each of these random car uh, basically open end car will appear uh, totally randomly on the screen that is why we are here we are just using this uh, random module and then we are applying it uh, right here on this um, basically list in which we have loaded all of these uh, open end car images and then same goes for my open end car uh, open end car uh, height and width because we are assigning the width and height uh, to my open end cars completely randomly as well and then in here basically inside this function open and car coordinate we are defining the coordinate of of my, of my open and car that is where it should appear on the screen so uh, on the x axis uh, it will it will appear randomly in between this range on the, uh, upon x axis and and then on the y axis it will appear again randomly uh, with a basically inside this range and then in here we are basically returning the coordinate of my open end car and then in here we have the score function which is used for displaying our score so in here we are basically displaying our score with this font and then the size of the font is 30 and then we are basic since we are based we need to render our score again and again that is why we are using this render function and then we are displaying our score on the screen and then basically this function is for displaying the game or image and that function will be called once the number of lives left are basically negative one so it will be zero and then after uh, when my car actually collides with the open end car or with the side of the road then the number of lives will be actually reduced to negative one which means that our game will be over and this is basically our current uh, basically enter the current score function and then here we are basically since we basically need to write each of my score that uh, that i will score uh, in the past basically in a file that I named as his uh, basically high score.txt okay so and now here we are using a because we need to append it because we need to write uh, our score at the end of the text file and then in here we are basically writing our score uh, inside that file that we will score and then we in, uh, in basically in, and then in this function our uh, previous score we are basically getting the previous score that we have scored uh, basically by using first of all uh, we are basically removing all these spaces on the right side 
and then we are sorting our score and then in here uh, we are getting the length of our score basically the number of scores uh, that are stored uh, in that file and then basically that will give us the index number of the uh, basic the next index number of the previous score so that is why we have to subtract here negative one and then here we are basically showing our uh, previous score uh, with this font and with this font size and then similarly uh, this one this display life function is basically for displaying our life and the this display life function will be called uh, each time when my car actually collide with the opponent car or with the sides of the road and then we have this uh, light function basically it is, it is basically all of these three buttons that you can see right here on the screen so it is basically um, and here we are basically passing uh, the center point of these buttons and then the radius and then the color of these lights okay so this is what we have inside this function and now let's go back to this file racing underscore car underscore main dot py okay so we are basically creating the instance for uh, this car and then we are naming this instance as previous score because we will be using this instance to display our previous score uh, so you can see that in here we have called this previous score function so that, it can dis so, that it, so that it can be displayed on our screen and then in here we initially we are setting the end game equal to false because our, our game will not be ended uh, while uh, once we just uh, start playing our game and then obviously our game will not be paused as soon as we start playing our game so that is why again we are just setting this value equal to false okay so now in here we are uh, creating another instance of this uh, class and then we obviously need to pass the display function and now basically the job of uh, this uh, basically this uh, function is to actually display this whole thing so right in here first of all um, I'm just calling this fill function which will create out the previous frame and then display everything totally updated okay so now in here we are first of all checking if we have uh, some kind of event and that event is basically equal to my quit button which means the user press the cross button on the screen then we are quitting our game and then releasing all the system resources and then we have on uh, these colors and then we have we are basically displaying this message uh, which is a dodge car which is basically uh, this um, uh, this uh, title you can see right here on the screen so the reason it is blitting you can see that it is uh, changing its color again and again uh, well this is because uh, this function is actually oops right in here uh, let me show you okay so this is because it is actually inside a loop and now in here uh, let me show you okay so since it is inside uh, my while loop and uh, yeah in here you can see that it's actually inside my while loop so this condition will always be true uh, as long as we have the screen and as long as i haven't uh, click either this button or this button so that is why it is actually changing its color again and again because in here you can see that in here i'm just using a random color that is either red yellow or green so this it is actually calling it again and again and choosing a random color either red yellow or green each time this loop is called uh, so that is why and then we are applying it basically right here on this text so that is why it is changing its color again and again okay and then we are displaying uh, this text and then uh, basically then we are putting this image on our screen and then basically we are calling this function and the job of basically this function interactive is to create buttons basically not only these three buttons um, but actually the other three buttons when our game was over which says the uh, start button or the quit button uh, when our game was basically the restart button or the quit button when our game was over if you remember it okay uh, so basically let's just go to this function there what is the job of this function okay so we have this interactive function and then we are passing the center position that is basically the center position of these buttons and then obviously we need to define the radius so radius is basically the, uh, the distance from the center point of the circle towards the edges of the circle so that is called the radius and i told you in depth why do we need to pass a radius while i was creating basically wh while i was explaining this function okay uh, so in here we need to get the uh, mouse positions uh, because we are just making sure that our mouse is exactly at this point and then when i click at this point th only then our game should be started so right in here i just need to get our uh, mouse position and then obviously uh, i need to basically get the x and y position uh, of my screen where of my mouse where it is clicked 
And the reason we need to get it is because we need to make, uh, we'll just make sure that where the user has actually clicked. And if the user has clicked at this position on the screen, it means that you want to actually, it means that he has pressed the start button and then we should, uh, we should basically, uh, it should display another screen, uh, basically a new frame uh, where we will have three to one and then we should be able to play a game. And then similarly, when the user uh, clicks somewhere at this position on the screen, then we should actually exit our game. Okay, so that is when we need to basically get this thing. And in here, first of all, um, we are creating this for loop uh, event.get uh, event function because um, we are getting uh, events uh, using this function get. And now in here, we are checking what type of event has actually occurred. And now in here, we are basically noting the coordinate of my mouse each time my mouse will be moved. And then we are storing it in these two variables, x and y, that is the coordinate of my mouse along x and y axis. And now in here we are uh, basically getting the coordinate of my mouse where the mouse is actually clicked. And now once it is clicked, we are setting this variable equal to true. And then once my mouse button is actually released, even then we are getting the coordinate. And uh, now in here, we are subtracting uh, basically the center position with this radius because we need to get the edge position of uh, basically this button. And the reason we need to get the edge position of my button because I just want to make sure that as soon as my mouse actually touches the edge position, as soon as it touches the edge position of my circle, basically this button, then the color should be changed. And then same goes for this ready and then the quit button. So that's why we need to get the edge position of my, uh, basically of these buttons along X and Y axis. So that's why we're just getting this left X and then left Y position, which is basically the edge position of this button along X and Y axis. So by X axis, I mean this position and then this position and then by Y axis, I mean this position and then this position. Okay, now in here, uh, we are checking uh, basically, first of all in here, uh, and then obviously we need to define the height and width of our button and that is going to be equal to basically two times the radius because radius is basically half the circle so you just multiply it by two that is going to be the width and height of my uh, buttons. Okay so now in here I just I'm just making sure that if my mouse position is actually greater than left x so means that that is basically the left x position basically that exactly edge position is actually the left x position and if it is greater than X, means that my mouse is somewhere greater than the edge position, means that it's somewhere on the buttons. And then I need to make sure that uh, it is on the Y axis as well. Then in here, I'm just checking that uh, in here, basically in here, I'm just checking it is also basically not somewhere right here, but it is actually, if that position is actually less than my so in here, let me just explain. If my mouse X position is actually left, less than left X, which is basically this position, plus, so basically left X is actually this position, and then if it is uh, at the width, then this basically becomes this position. So left X plus width actually becomes this position, where my cursor is exactly right now. So, if I, so in here, I'm just stating that if this position is less than mouse X means that that is basically the left x, uh, basically the left x plus width position. And if it is, I mean, if I just move my cursor towards the left side, it means that my mouse x is now less than actually this thing. Means that my mouse is exactly, uh, basically at this position on my button along x axis. I'm not talking about y axis because on y axis it may be, it might be somewhere right here as well. But I'm just talking in here. I'm talking about only x axis. And now similarly for y axis. I just need to define as well. So left y is basically the uh, top edge position of my mouse. So if it is greater than uh, basically, so, so in here, my mouse is somewhere right here. And now if my mouse position is actually greater than a left y, and then same goes for height as well, then it means that my uh, mouse is, is, is exactly on the button. Then I'm just calling this function just in uh, dot lights, means that I want to basically uh, display uh, the button on the screen and I need to pass the center position and then the radius and then the basically the color basically uh, that color when my mouse is, is exactly on that button. Okay. And then same goes for, uh, this remaining condition as well. So if that is the case and now in here, I'm just checking if the user actually clicks. So basically this condition is exactly similar to this condition. So in here, I'm just stating that when my mouse is actually at this position, 
and then here I'm just stating that when, when the user has clicked basically at this position means that the user has the user actually want to play the game and now in here we are checking that if um, uh, life is equal to equal to negative 2 then we are setting this variable equal to uh, life equal to 2 because the user actually want to play the game so when the game is actually over and then we are pressing the restart button so at that time the uh, life was actually negative 1 so if at that point even if the user press the restart button and you know you know that life was equal to ne negative 1 when the uh, user pressed the restart button so in here we are just reassigning the value equal to 2 because the user once again want to play the game but if at that moment uh, the user pressed the start button the life was equal to 2 so this condition will be false and he will enter basically inside this condition and if it is equal to true then we are setting its value equal to false and then we are basically playing this music or else if that is not the case then basically call this function enter game and then call this function main okay so this uh, remaining condition is and then we are basically writing everything for uh, this button and then this button for uh, whatever code we have written inside uh, this function so if you have understood uh, this condition then the condition for this button and then this button is exactly the same okay so now i don't i don't need to explain anything else in this function so in here we have called basically this function and then this function okay so let's just first of all go to this enter game function so when the user actually press uh, the start button you can see that we have basically we are seeing this thing three two one and go and this is what basically this enter game function will do first of all it will clear out the previous frame and display a new frame with everything updated and then in here we're just defining the coordinate because uh, as soon as we have three two one go you can see that we have this road and the trees and everything and we have this score and then we have uh, the turns left uh, equal to two as well so now in here uh, we are just basically defining the coordinates where my trees and road should be and uh, then uh, initially you you can you can see that we have three and then two and then and then one and then go so right in here i'm just stating that as long as my time is not basically this variable is greater than or equal to zero then keep displaying my road images and tree images uh, tree image number one and tree image number two and if this can and if it is equal to zero then we want to display this go message and, and if it is not equal to zero then basically we need to display uh, the message uh, that will be so in here we are just subtracting it so initially it will be three and then in here we are subtracting it so it, uh, again it will come uh, this condition will get true it will be two and then one and then once it will be zero then we actually want to display this message uh, go so this is what this function is doing and then after calling this function we were calling this main function okay so before calling this function let me just explain the other function that we have um, inside this file which is named as racing underscore car underscore main dot py so first of all we have this pause function and this will actually pause our screen so in here we have made uh, this function global so initially we have set this value equal to false because initially our game uh, will not be paused and uh, then in here we are just playing uh, this music and then we are setting its value equal to true when the user want to uh, pause the game then we are setting its value equal to true and then in here i'm just st uh, stating that as long as the game is paused keep displaying the pause message and then we will have two buttons so now right now i have the screen and let me just restart this game and let me just press this uh, p button okay so just press the p button you can see that we have two buttons that is continue button and then the quit button so this is what in here i'm just saying that as long as the game is paused create these two buttons continue and quit with this function uh, interactive so we have created this function and this function and job and the job of this function is to basically create buttons so when the game is paused uh, create these two buttons and then keep everything updated and we are basically calling this loop 30 times in one second okay uh, so we have this pause function and then we have the rest restart page uh, button so uh, when the game is over we will have these two button restart button and then the quit button okay so this is what this function is doing and uh, yeah basically this life count function is basically counting the number of lives and uh, well we will call this function in our main file basically main function and that function will be called 
when on the number of life when basically my, my my car actually collided with the opponent car or with the sides of the road then in here we need to subtract the number of lives by one and in here i'm just saying that if my uh, number of life gets equal to negative one then basically call on this uh, game over function and then this we, we will be displaying the game over image on the screen and um, in here uh, basically when life is equal to negative one then we need to restart the page as well so let me just uh, let me just show you this function restart page and here we have this function so on the restart page we have uh, two buttons that is the restart button and the quit button and then basically we are calling it 15 times in one second okay so uh, we have this restart button and then also we have to explain this life count button and then we have the display message uh, which is basically used to display these messages that is the continue message and then the quit button and then this pause message and everything like this okay so in here uh, it depends upon what text that we pass depending upon the condition of the game so basically the job of this function is to display uh, basically text on the screen uh, basically with this font and then the size that we will pass in this function and then obviously we need to pass the coordinate that is where we need to display this uh, text on the screen and then what is going to be the color of this text okay so this is what the display function is doing and then we have this explosion function so basically this explosion function job is to basically load this explosion uh, image and then display it once my car collide with the opening car or with the sides of the road simple as that okay so then we have this crash function and that function will be called once again my when my car collided with the opponent car or with the sides of the road so we are basically playing this music once it collides uh, with the opponent car or uh, with the op with the sides of the road and then we are displaying this explosion image and then we are uh, displaying the current score and then since we need to subtract the number of lives as well so that is why we are calling this function as well and then in here we are also calling this main function but i will just come to this main function uh, in a minute once i explain all other functions okay so i already have explained this entry screen function okay so i think i i have explained all the functions the pause function yeah this function and uh, then this enter game function obviously and then yeah now the final th uh, thing i need to explain is basically my main function from where we are controlling the entire uh, game that is we are calling different functions depending upon the condition of our game uh, from this function main okay so right in here okay so first of all simple as that we are first of all defining the coordinate of my car basically my car which is actually this car which i named as so i just named it as car image so it is basically not the opponent car but my car so these are the coordinate of my car <laughs> height of my car and uh, then i'm just uh, basically calling this function so the job of this uh, basically this object uh, is to display previous score okay so it is appearing so i can just comment it if, you, if i want or i can just leave it okay so then we are just defining this two variable x change and y change and uh, basically this is for when my car will actually change its position along x and y axis so you can see that when it just changes um, when it's press the right arrow key it is moving towards the right side it's changing its position along x axis so i need to tell python at what rate it should change its position so initially when i started the uh, game it was not changing its position so that is why i was setting its value equal to zero and then I need to define the right end of the road, uh, which is 600 pixels. And uh, then I'm just calling the open and car function. Uh, so, and this function is actually returning me one open and car and then the width and height of, of the open and car. So basically I'm basically displaying the open and car uh, on the screen. Uh, and uh, then in here, I'm just defining some speeds value because the open and car will be coming with some speeds. So first of all, I'm just calling this open and car coordinate function because the open and car because the open and car will be appearing on the screen along the coordinates that is along x and y axis. And then here I'm just defining the speeds of these open and cars, and then I'm just storing it in a list uh, so that I can just apply uh, basically random things uh, on this list because I want the speed of the open and car. I'm just basically assigning the speed of uh, the speed to each open and car totally randomly. Okay, so yeah so this is going to be the, the opinion car speed when the upper arrow key is actually pressed 
and uh, then here I'm just defining the coordinates for my roads and trees and uh, yeah these are some things and when, when my game is not paused and then when my, when my game is not ended as well then basically this is from the, from that point my game loop function is calling and if you remember we have set the fps equal to 40 which means that this a loop will be called 40 times in one second so first of all uh, when this loop will be called one time then at every time when this loop will be called i want to clear out the previous frame and then display the new frame because i need to update everything because my opponent car is moving my road is moving my trees are moving so i need to make sure that everything is totally updated so that is why so this is what this fill function actually do in pygame and then the road will be moving uh, with some speed uh, that we have assigned in this variable and same goes for trees as well and then here we're just uh, saying that when the road is about to cross the screen then we are reassigning its value so that our road can be continuous and then same, same goes for trees as well and then in here uh, we are basically displaying the road image and then the tree image and then uh, all the tree images and then here basically inside this for loop i'm basically checking all the um basically events that will happen that we that actually we need to happen uh to play our game so the first one is basically i'm checking if the user has pressed the cross button or not and if it is if that is the case then we will basically quit our game and then when the user has pressed the escape key and then after pressing the escape key when the user has released it then basically i want to quit our game as well and then the user has pressed the p button on the keyboard then we are calling this pause function which will actually dis which will actually pause our screen and then when the user would press the left arrow key then i want my car uh, basically my car to change uh, along x-axis basically with this space and then when i press the right arrow key i want my car to move towards the right side of the screen basically on the road uh, with this space and uh, then in here we are again reassigning uh, the coordinates no it is not the coordinate it's basically the speeds uh, that is the road will be moving at this pace trees will be moving at this pace and uh, when my score is actually greater than two then uh, i'm just saying that uh, the one of the opponent car now should appear a little faster okay and uh, then in here we are just checking some other kind of events as well so yeah so this is gonna happen when the key is released when the left arrow key is released or the right arrow key is released then my car should not change its coordinate along x-axis so that's why i'm just setting this value equal to zero okay and uh, then we have we are doing some obvious stuffs we are first of all in here we're just displaying our images on the screen and then the open and car images and then the coordinate where it should appear on the screen and when my score is actually greater than 10 then what i want is that I want multiple open end cars images to appear on the screen. So I just noticed that. Let me just play this game once again. Uh, let me just close it. Okay, so let me just play it once again. Okay, so you can see that when I press the start button. Okay, so first of all, we have three, two, one, and go. Okay, so in here you can see that when my score is actually less than 10, you can see that we are only seeing one car, one opponent car at one time. But when my score will get uh, greater than 10, you will then see that my, okay, so it is eight, nine, and then you will see that multiple cars images will appear on the screen. And this is what I'm just stating right here. So let me just pause it by pressing the P button. And this is what I'm saying right here. So in here, what I would, I'm, I'm just saying that you can display the second car image when my score is actually greater than a 10. So it means that now the second car image can appear on the screen along with the first car. Simple as that. Okay, and then uh, I'm just displaying the current score and then the previous score and I'm displaying the lives. Okay, so in here, I'm just uh, checking that, uh, I think I have added a comment right here. Okay, so if my car actually touches the sides of the road, so this is what this condition is all about basically this condition is all about so make sure that you understand what is actually the width and then the car weight and then what is the coordinates of the road only then you will be able to understand this condition so this condition is exactly the same that we have inside our interactive function and if you understand that condition then understanding this condition is actually not not a big deal one thing that you need to do is basically you have the car width 
and then the road coordinates are right on your mind and then understanding this condition is actually really simple okay so in here i'm just stating that when my car actually collides with the sides of the road then they call this a crash function and then the number of laps will be reduced obviously and then here we're just passing our score as well and then the coordinate that is the point where my car was when it collided with the side of the road okay so now in here i'm just uh, checking that when my opinion car crosses the bottom of the screen and my score was my score was also greater than 10 then in here in all of these things i'm just stating that that when my score is actually greater than a 10 then my opinion car images should keep on appearing simple as that or else if my score is not greater than 10 then what i want is that i only want one car image to appear at one time okay so this is what it is doing and obviously we need to increment our score when uh, basically our car when our when the opponent car crosses our car by not hitting us obviously and then here we are just uh, increasing the uh, speeds of our road and then trees and uh, then and here i'm saying that if my score is exactly equal to 10 then i want my second car image to appear on the screen as well and uh, you might have noticed it that uh, let me just execute it once again when my score is actually greater than 10 sorry when it is exactly equal to 10 then you would have noticed that the second car image would have appeared on the screen as well okay so you can see that at the moment it is less than 10 so you can only see one car at one time and it is very simple to light and my score is now again zero and okay so we have now eight nine and now when it is exactly equal to ten you can now see that we now have multiple cars on the screen so exactly equal to ten let me just pause it okay so when it is exactly equal to 10 then i want my second opponent car image to appear as well obviously first of all again we are just calling this opponent car function which is returning the opponent car image and then the height and width of that car and then we are calling this opponent car coordinate function which will return the coordinate of my, of the opponent car and if that is greater than 10 and when my opponent car actually crosses uh, the height of the screen when basically it crosses the screen then sa same goal same goes for again i want my second car image to keep appearing as long as my score is greater than 10 and my uh, the opponent car the, basically the opponent car actually crosses my screen then as long as this condition will be true then i want my basically second car image to appear as well so i want my first car image to appear as well as long as my score is greater than 10 and then similarly as long as my score is greater than 10 i want my second car second opponent car image to appear as well simple as that okay so then the only thing i need to basically explain is somewhere right here okay so in here we are actually checking um the crash of our car with the opponent car so again you need to make sure that what is the width and height of the opponent car and then the coordinate of our car and then only then you will be able to understand this condition because this condition is only checking if uh, the opponent car is actually collided with our car or not and then in here obviously we need to call this function if this condition is met okay so then in here similarly again we are checking on uh, this condition even uh, when the score is when the score is greater than 10 or it is and it is actually less than or equal to 10 and yeah that's all that's all we have done in this game okay so basically i know that understanding this condition might be a little tougher well i have explained um basically the in the interactive function basically i have explained um this condition pretty much in depth and this is because uh, i just want you to make you make uh, make these things in mind that you should know what is the exact coordinate where on the car or basically depending upon the condition that where your coordinates are and then what is the height and width of a particular image and then where it is appearing on the screen so if that thing is in, in your mind and then you understand how the coordinates work uh, while playing the game i will just display the image of the coordinate how it is displayed on the screen on a computer then you can just look at it and then understand all of these conditions okay 
so yeah that's it for this video you now have successfully made this game and yeah that's it for uh this game as well so if you have any problem executing this whole code and then just let me know through email i'll just provide this whole code in, at the end of this video as well uh if you are getting some error you can just uh, copy and paste that code and then just see your mistake as well and if you, you still have any problem you can just let me know through email or you can just directly contact me through messages or you can ask your question in the question answer section and i will get back to you as soon as i can so up to the next video thank you for watching and i'll see you guys next time